Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Okay everybody, welcome to another video. Today we are going to introduce um, an Arduino um, fan um, control using a button as a momentary uh, single pole, single throw relay or switch. Now this sounds very easy in, in principle, but it's not. You know, remember, we're using a computer to act like a relay. As usual, uh, this series also involves the sketch. We, we cannot post the sketch on the description as we thought we could do before because it's, it doesn't take certain uh, characters that we use for the software, for the program. So but you can always uh, uh, write to us, you know, email uh, uh, sales at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com sales at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com and we're, we'll send you the sketch uh, your way. So it's very simple, very easy. So in this series, these are completed projects. All you need is an Arduino board and, and whatever uh, extra circuitry you might need, like the uh, driver 100, if, if so, or any other uh, driver transistorized uh, circuit to move the load. So again, the objective of, of this video is to use the Arduino as a relay, as an on and off relay using a momentary uh, button. So basically, you're going to push the button, it'll, it'll go on and off, because it's momentary, uh, it'll turn the relay, it'll turn, uh, the Arduino is going to act, so this is a computer acting as a relay, it's going to turn on, and then you press it again, and it's going to turn off. No relays involved, it's just the Arduino circuitry inside the, the computer uh, doing that in software. I'm going to show you the software later on. First, uh, as we always do in this video series, uh, we're going to show you the diagram, and the diagram is pretty simple. Uh, it's nothing more than a 10k resistor. Um, it goes between um, uh, the 5 volt and the uh, and the button and the A. Uh, we're, gonna, we're using the A2 in this particular one. You can change it in software if you want, but for this example, we're, we're always going to use the A2 uh, input, which is the analog number two. Uh, it's got a bunch of analog inputs. You could use the serial, uh, the digital inputs as well. So it's up to you. Uh, but anyhow, so. It, a 10k resistor and then from there on uh, we're going to use a button uh, between ground and the same uh, 10k uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry the same a2 pin which is the analog number two pin okay so basically you are taking that pin uh, to 5 volts and the switch momentarily is going to provide a ground pulse one simple single ground pulse and and that's that's what's going to turn on the load on the other side on the what you see now on the blue uh at the pin number 13 and not the blue the green uh leads that you see on the diagram now on to the uh the sketch which is the uh, the software that runs the arduino now the sketch like any other sketch in arduino is always compo composed of the setup and the loop section so two sections the setup and the loop the setup is exactly um, as it says. As you can see here, it sets uh, the serial uh, port uh, in, or in order to output a, a um, uh, some variable, some value, which we do uh, always uh, we'll use the plotter on the Arduino IDE. And then pin number 13 is set up as an output. Remember, the Arduino uh, is a board that you can configure to suit your needs. And so pin number 13, we're setting, up, uh, we're setting it up as an output. And this is the output that's going to trigger the board, uh, the transistorized board, the driver 100 board, which we uh, manufacture and uh, it's available on our website. You can get the driver 100 as a kit, which is uh, a lot cheaper, and uh, and as a completed unit, which is a little, little bit more expensive. The second part of the sketch or, or the software is the, uh, the loop section. Now the loop section, as you can see on screen, um, it pretty much, the, the first part of the, of the uh, loop section, uh, it it, what it does is it, it changes the uh, digital values into um, into numeric values so that you can understand it. That's no big deal. Uh, but this is where this this part on screen right is where the magic happens. This is the nice part. This is the, this is uh, an algorithm that pretty much and it, it it's very well documented right on the sketch. We put comments 
that doesn't do anything on the software but pretty much explain uh, what it does and basically what you see here you have an if um, a conditional loop okay so the, the if uh, it says if sensor value is less than 0 0.1 so it's if it's less than 0 0.1 volts okay uh, do whatever is after that basically what it says is that if you push the button and it's grounded I mean if it's less than 0 0.1 volt it's grounded so it's almost zero okay but you have to tell it something and, and I through trial and error we I figure out that 0 0.1 is better uh, it, it signifies ground very if you go lower than that you may have issues because sometimes the button may have a little bit of resistance and this this and that and so again this is this this uh, software that what you see right now is going to latch it'll latch the Arduino into an on or an off circuit and we're going to go further down you would see there is a second conditional loop in there that says if switch counter equals zero that double equal means equals in, in, in C programming which is what we're using here so if switch counter equals zero then digital write 13 high that means pin number three uh, number 13 take it high then set the variable switch counter to one that means it's on okay then delay it by 1000 1000 um, milliseconds is one second so pretty much uh, it's it's not too hard to, to understand and it's commented on the side that you can see the comments now because we've uh, closed we have the, the stuff you know the uh, the sketch in close up now then there's another else if this is if switch counter it's e it's equals one then take the digital this is the second time that you that you push the button so the first time it, it analyzes the uh, switch counter First, it analyzes the, the button for zero. So it's all, it always takes, a, the button is always connected to zero. Okay, the say, so it, it, it evaluates the switch counter to zero and then takes the uh, number 13 high. And then the switch counter now becomes one. Then the switch counter, if it is one, the, in the else if, uh, then you further down, you see digital write low. 13 low that means take pin number 13 low that turns off uh, the transistor the driver 100 board okay and then it now sets switch counter to zero it delays it by 1000 again so it delays it by one second and you need that delay there otherwise it's uh the delays to prevent uh, the uh, the debounce uh, the circuit uh, the button debouncing is anytime you have a button or a switch you're going to have garbage you know on, on the signal you're going to have a little bit of a for for a few fractions of a second there for a few milliseconds you're going to have garbage so this is going to for one one thousand delay one thousand it, it's going to ignore all that and it's just going to concentrate on the fact that you went below point one this is what the delay is for so again this is a conditional loop the the if uh the first if uh, statement evaluates to uh point one volts which is almost ground so it evaluates to ground pretty much then there is another if and it's counter if the switch counter uh, it equals zero means if it's off then take pin number thir 13 high so take it on and then set the switch counter to one delay by 1000 keep going down else if switch counter if it's if it's one that means if it's on then turn number 13 uh, low turn it off okay and then set switch counter to off you know set the counter to off pretty much and then delay, delay it again this is pretty much what you need uh, if you want to take it into a digital level so you have a bunch of digital pins on the arduino uh, of course the arduino it's massively expandable uh, but pretty much you don't the, the, the idea of this video is just to show you one single component where you can uh, use it so you could pretty much uh, uh, i think there's uh, 52 uh, at, at least 50 uh, digital ios so digital input output pins on the arduino uh, you can get an Arduino now for like nine dollars, ten dollars, even less than that if you buy a, a few units at a time. And uh, they're very inexpensive. It's incredible how th this technology. And this is an Italian project that came out 20 years ago, and it keeps evolving. It's, a, it's an open source uh, project that you can pretty much get anywhere, do whatever you want, and make it do whatever you want. This this is this thing is expandable. Like it's it's incredible. So anyhow, uh, and so for now we're going to see uh, this whole deal in action here with, so with a couple of videos that we have. And basically what you see here, it's uh, the button turning a, a small motor on and off using the button and using the software that you, that you just saw and using a um, 
the driver 100 board uh, kit that we uh, uh, which we manufacture and sell pretty much so again um, you know we appreciate you watching it all the time and and if you follow us on this channel you're gonna see a bunch of videos relating to Arduino we have a bunch of goodies and the idea is to e eventually extend this uh, technology so that you can make a lot of stuff related to automotive diagnostics and automotive repair so again uh, thank you for watching Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Uh, today's video is going to go um, deep into um, making an Arduino blower, AC blower motor uh, controller, speed controller, uh, pretty much. So, um, this is a completed project. The sketch or the software, it's available upon request on our website. It's up to you uh, to uh, request it. Um, having said that, um, Anyhow, so this is going to be a completed project and all for those of you who have issues with um, you have an older car or you want to um, you want to put some kind of a controller to the blower motor. Uh, in today's uh, cars, you have uh, if it's an older car, you have the resistors um, and pretty much those are in charge of, of putting controlling the speed of your blower motor. Uh, it, uh, it's an old system that uh, sometimes doesn't really work that well, uh, sometimes it does, resistors break, and it, 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 but if you do uh, want to, to create some kind of a uh, um, digital uh, speed controller, uh, this is it, this project is going to help you out. Okay, as, you, as we usually do in uh, our video series on Arduinos, we're going to show you now the uh, schematic that we're, that we're doing. So. Uh, this schematic is using the uh, driver 100 uh, DIY kit. This is the final driver transistor uh, and it uses a, a, a $9 Arduino board. Now on the left hand side you're going to see a, um, uh, a 10k resistor. This is pretty much you know all it is, yeah, all there is to it. You're going to see a, a 10k resistor and a button. Now the Arduino uh, 100 it's a um, it's a kit that you don't have to get the Arduino. The, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the driver 100. Uh, you could just get any final output. You could make it your, yourself if you want. It's up to you. Uh, so we sell the uh, driver 100 in a uh, in a kit. You know, so you could buy it as a DIY. Uh, you assemble it yourself or already completed. Uh, it's up to you how you want it. If you just want to put it inside your, your car because you want to add um, a, a, a AC blower motor um, speed controller, then you, you're probably better off buying it and making it yourself as, as far as assembling it yourself, uh, the Driver 100 kit. Uh, it's a nice kit. It's, it's, it's already done. Everything is done for you. Uh, so you don't have to design anything. Uh, so anyhow, um, going back to the, uh, uh, to, to the um, uh, sch schematic, uh, basically, the the important part of it is it's the button and the 10k resistor. Uh, we're using the A2 uh, analog A2 input on the uh, on the Arduino, so you're going to have both the dr the button and the re 10k resistor uh, together on one side to the A2 terminal, and then the other side. And this, by the way, you can change in software. So it, you know, you can you could do it whatever you want. You could you could apply it to any any of the of these uh, terminals. And the other side, the resistor goes to the five volt reference uh, on the side of the Arduino, and then the other side of the uh, uh, push button uh, goes to the uh, to, to ground. So basically, what what's going to happen is anytime you press on the button, you're going to ground the circuit. Next, going on to the software, uh, the first 
we're not even going to go into the setup part because uh, every Arduino software it's all, or Sketch, that's how it's called, uh, it always has a setup part and it always has a, uh, a loop part. The setup is uh, it's on our previous video. Uh, it's the same setup as this one where you, that's where you allow, that's, that's where you set the uh, uh, analog uh, to a terminal as, uh, as an input or an output. Uh, and the output, uh, I in this case, it's going to be an input and the output is uh, pin number 13. Uh, on the on the on the Arduino, now, and that you do on on the setup part. Uh, on the loop uh, side, as you see here, um, we're gonna go deep into it on a close up, and this is where the magic happens, pretty much. So you have two sides to it. Uh, the one side, the first one on dark green that you see here, it, it, that's the one that takes an input from the button. Okay, so what it does, it's it uses uh, the switch counter variable. That's what it what it's, it controls that variable, and that's what it's going to give you the speed. And we'll go into that a little bit later on. But anyhow, what you see here, it's uh, uh, it takes an input where you say it, it says if uh, the value of the sensor it's less than 0 0.1 volts, which is pretty much ground. So if the value of the sensor, or in this case the switch, we're, we're talking about terminal A2, if it's grounded, then add one to switch counter. Everything happens digitally in software okay and then the software f then controls the uh, the unit so going back to the subroutine here uh, so it adds if you push the button and it, meaning ground terminal a2 add one to switch counter uh, there's a delay a little bit afterwards and then there's a switch counter um, it, it actually if it's not then go in and set switch counter to 15 that that means turn it off and it will go Later, further down, you're going to see that. So the second uh, subroutine, uh, it's um, it, it evaluates switch counter, which is the variable that we change when we push that button. Okay, and so you see the first those four lines, the first the, the upper two ones, it controls the PWM on side. So we are actually making a PWM digital signal here. We're making it so uh, the the Arduino has the ability to output a say a PWM signal too. Uh, by itself, but we we want a, a little bit of a lower frequency for this. So basically, what we're doing here is we're setting the first two lines. Uh, it sets the Arduino too high. That's remember if we if the switch counter uh, is um, it's less. Uh, in other words, if it's grounded. So if it's grounded on the top, it's going to set the switch counter to one anywhere between one. This is a by the way, this is a fifth a 14 speed blower motor and you can change that if you want okay so anyhow uh, a little bit further down you see that it says the, the digital right that means high turn the the pwm on and then there is a delay and then turn the pwm off further down in the last two lines uh, that you see on those first four lines in there uh, um, if uh, the the switch counter is zero that means turn it off now on the upper uh, on the upper dark green uh, subroutine, you see that it says like halfway through it says switch if switch counter is uh, greater than or equals to 15. That's why this is a 14 speed. If you change that number to whatever you want, say you want to make it into an 8 speed blower motor, you just change that number and it'll pretty much change the, the maximum uh, the maximum steps. So it'll be a a an 8 step uh, blower controller. This is now a 14 or 15 step blower control, but the 15 is always zero, so it, it, then it goes into uh, into zero pretty much. So again, this is a full top of the line blower motor switch controller. It, or just all you have to do is push one little button, and you can you can rig it yourself, make it into a box, buy a cheap enclosure from from anywhere. Um, in these days, Radio Shack is gone, so you probably go somewhere else, and you know, online, and then buy uh, an enclosure, set it up in your car. If you have an old car that you want to do this too, uh, and this is it, you would need the uh, some kind of an output transistor, uh, pretty much. But this is a full-fledged um, air conditioning blower motor, and you can apply this, by the way, to anything that's uh, that you want to control in steps. But in this particular case, we applied it to the blower motor on the air conditioning. Following, we can see how we set up the uh, the whole deal. You know, the whole. Uh, circuitry here um, as uh, in, in sort of a um, prototyping uh, method so um, it is pretty straightforward just connect it as is on the on the diagram and that's pretty much it
now on screen we can show you what what's happening in the software as we as we control the um, uh, the Arduino and and the motor so as you can see here this number that you see um, it, it's we are actually reading the serial output of the Arduino and it reads uh, the actual speed anytime we press that little button it changes the speed and it changes the value uh, of the PWM signal okay so pretty much again you have you have 14 speeds in this particular case if you change that subroutine that we mentioned before then you you can make it whatever into whatever you want okay and this also applies to if you want to control something else you know uh, who knows there's a pos endless possibility you know of controlling a, a component with this thing here so anyhow as you can see this is what happens uh, when you uh, keep pressing the button inside the software itself uh, that's what the software sees it sees the the, the counter uh, that variable counter in there which is the, the switch counter uh, and by s changing the switch counter variable we change the speed and this is what happens in a car inside a car too uh, this is what the computer does whether it's your, whether you're changing the injector pulse width or or the blower motor it doesn't really matter this is this is how it's done in in the software again so we always uh, thank you for tuning into our channel ADP training uh, so we try to expose as much as possible anything related to Arduinos or, or automotive technology in general. In this particular this series is about Arduinos and, and cars and automobiles. So um, thank you for being with us and thank you for watching. Okay, everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to uh, analyze... Um, uh, automotive modules in how they are able to control the different components this is the first part of um, uh, well, a series of videos that we're going to do but in th th this particular one controlling the fan an automotive uh, uh, fan module so um, with that in mind the second part is going to touch it's going to go deeper into the actual firmware or the flash the reflashing of these modules and exactly how that's done uh, in software now on screen now uh, we can see a, a typical module uh, now we have to uh, mention one thing a module is a computer uh, the difference being is that it between say a module and, and an ECM is that a module usually controls in automotive uh, applications uh, one component at a time so a module tends to control one um, piece of uh, of hardware at a time say a, a motor a solenoid and so on and so forth not always but this this is the main difference between one and the other but all in all a module is a computer uh, in this particular case we are going to be using a specific module uh, which is not necessarily meant for automotive use but can definitely be used for that uh, it's called the Arduino uh, which is a very vast module that can actually it's more like an ECM it can be made to control multiple components with multiple inputs and multiple outputs now Arduino is the name of a project. It's, it's pretty popular. It's been on for maybe 20 years by now, and so. But it's more it, the name of a project, not necessarily the name of a chip or the name of any specific components. Uh, Arduinos use usually they use at mega microprocessors, uh, but not always. But it's again, it's a very it's a very vast module that can control multiple uh, components. Now, like any like any like any module. Um, a module has to be able to um, affect the logic in other words the on and off digital pulses but it also has to have a driver or a high power high current uh, transistor in this particular case we're going to be using the driver 100 which is one of our boxes that we actually uh, it can be made to control anything the driver 100 is specifically made to control um, motors, uh, solenoids, injectors, and so on and so forth. And that's what we're going to use on, on our video. Now, for sake of brevity and not to make this video too complicated, we're going to be using only one output. As you can see, there's a bunch of outputs, uh, digital outputs uh, on the Arduino. Uh, so we're going to be using pin number 13 and ground. And that's exactly what's going to trigger the driver 100 module to be able to control uh, the, the, the we're going to use a small motor, but that's make believe that this is going to be the fan motor.
the first step is pretty much to uh, start the, the attachments uh, uh, um, from the driver 100 uh, to the Arduino board. Again, in this case, we're going to be using pin 13 and ground uh, to attach the driver 100 to the uh, Arduino board. And finally, we attach the motor to the driver 100 board, so that that's the one that's actually going to uh, the uh, that's going to create the output, the high current output to drive the motor. Now, on screen, we we can see the screen with the actual software that we're going to be using to control the the motor. We're not going to go too deep into it. This is going to be part two of the, of the video, but we're at least we're going to show you that uh, by changing the um, um, the firmware which is called the flash in automotive uh, components it's called the the, re the reflash when this is what this is the actual reflash whenever we, we, we reflash a computer in an automotive uh, um, in automotive uh, applications we, the reflashing is going to be this guy here that we're doing right now this particular flash software is going to be it is the one that's going to make the uh, the motor turn on and off at a slower um, interval uh, the second part is going to be we're going to change the, fla the flashing uh, firmware to uh, to make the, the motor turn on and off faster. Now on screen, without uh, going too deep into it, uh, we we are changing the flash firmware uh, to make the uh, the motor turn on and off a little bit faster. Now this has been a video that, that goes into the modules, uh, automotive uh, control modules and how we can actually affect the same using an Arduino board uh, just to show you the actual mechanism involved um, in, in controlling components in, in, in automobiles. Next video we're going to go deeper into, into this how, um, into the, the reflash uh, software and how it works. This has been a video on... Okay everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, this is part two of the uh, the video that we sh showed before um, about the modules, and today we're just going to go deeper into reflashing and what a reflash software is, is all about. As you all know, uh, pretty much most automotive computers these days are reflashable. Um, basically, they're empty, and you reflash it, and you make them do um, whatever you want. Depending on the flash on the on the software, this is this is also called the firmware. To briefly recap the the video before this one, uh, a module uh, it's different than a than a regular ECM in that it only controls one or two things, usually one. So a module has a very specific use. An engine control module, on the other hand, it it's, it controls multiple uh, components, and it's just it is what it is. You have engine control modules, transmission control modules, body control modules, and so on and so forth. In our previous video, we were explaining, you know, how to use a an Arduino board, uh, which is a it, it is a module. It's exactly what it is. It has multiple outputs, but we're just going to use one to control a a motor. In this particular case, make believe it's a it's a fan motor, even though it's a small motor, but it's the same deal. And we're also using uh, the driver 100. Uh, this is a unit that we manufactured, and it has to, it, it, what it does is pretty much takes an input, uh, in this case from the from the uh, Arduino, uh, and and pretty much controls whatever you you set it to. As you can see on screen very very quickly, um, let's just analyze the electronics a little bit. Uh, the green lead uh, coming out of 13 on the Arduino board actually controls the base uh of of the major the big transistor that that uh, the output transistor now uh in between that there's a whole bunch of circuitry so we're not really going to go deep into that we just put a little symbol in there that says chip just to uh to let people know that uh, the viewer know that that it's not really just a transistor there's more to it than that anyhow and then you also have the power and ground uh, connections very very straightforward so with this arrangement a very tiny pulse coming out of 13 pin 13 uh, feeds the um, triggers the uh, base of the transistor, uh, and the, uh, it, that in turn turns the transistor on and off uh, for the output. Uh, the the board, the Arduino board by itself, cannot control anything uh, because it's uh, it's not it doesn't have enough power, enough uh, current. Uh, so the transistor is there just for that. 
besides there's a whole bunch of other circuitry uh, to protect the, the whatever you're controlling uh, but anyhow that's a basic uh, idea now on screen we can pretty much see the actual uh, uh, firmware the the programming uh, this is what you use to uh, uh, program uh, the Arduino it's called the Arduino IDE um, again we're just going to go a little deeper into um, exactly what we have to do to to tinker with the with the with the software itself which is the firmware that's going to go um, go inside but we program the, the Arduino now we can see the basic the basic on control sketch uh, or the programming that's actually going to do the controlling and we're going to explain to it what this means okay so on screen we have two sections sections of uh, the, the part one and part two and now all almost any um, Arduino programmers uh, software it's uh, be divided into two one is the setup uh, which is part one and the other one is the loop uh, which keeps running on over and over and over and over on and on so that's that's the basic explanation for for this particular software for almost any software that goes on the Arduino now right away looking at the close-up for the uh, for the setup part you would see uh, that uh, the pin mode it says pin mode uh, in parentheses you see LED built in built in and output so we're gonna set that that's pin number 13 so we're gonna set pin number 13 as an output and this is a digital pin this particular pin is a digital pin so it's either on or off it's not it doesn't it doesn't fluctuate it's not an analog pin in other words it doesn't have a, a sine wave output uh, as you would with with say a crank sensor or a cam sensor of the magnetic type so again easy the setup pretty much sets the output pin uh, in this case the LED uh, that says built-in is that corresponds to pin number 13 uh, we could have just go ahead and put a 13 in there but just just to make it uh, more readable uh, we, we did it like this then in blue uh, you see the loop part of it and if you look at it very carefully it pretty much says um, it says digital right LED built-in um, that's referring to pin number 13 and it says high then a little bit further down it says delay 1000 this you can this is what gives you the delay and then if you keep going down re, uh, digital right again LED built in that's pin number 13 low uh, comma low and then another delay and this is going to keep repeating so pretty much is self-explanatory and uh, right next to it there's a comment that I put in there it says turn the motor on uh, right next to the digital right turn the motor on high um, is a trigger uh, the, the trigger output f that goes to the trans the base of that transistor that you saw before uh, there's a delay so wait on it turns it on it waits uh, 1000 by the way it's um, that's pretty much one uh, it's a number of milliseconds uh, but anyhow uh, and then so another you know uh, LED built in low that turns the motor off and then there's another delay and then it keeps repeating it so that's why it's called a loop uh, and keeps going on and on and on. This is exactly the same mechanism that's used to control transistors, I mean um, uh, injectors, uh, solenoids, shift solenoids for transmissions and you name it. Uh, this, this is a, a def what goes in the, in the flash, this is the, the actual reflashing uh, of modules and this is exactly what we're doing here. In, in this case we're using an Arduino board to reflash uh, um, th this particular software into it to control the motor but it doesn't make any difference it's just the same principle uh, regardless of what w whether you're doing it to an ECM or to an Arduino then next we're going to tweak the uh, the delay those delay numbers that says a thousand we're going to change it to a hundred and you're going to see how the the motor turns on and off uh, a lot faster than before and that's this is pretty much this is uh, this is exactly how for example uh, uh, the um, shift solenoids for, that comes to mind or could be anything could be the, the fuel pump module uh, how it's turned on and off uh, in the, the particular case it, it's it's duty cycles which is an on and off pulse you know and that's how it's actually done uh, depending on on the reaction of, of this mod this particular module they're doing all we can make it to react to other things we're going to see that in other videos in the future in other words we can make it react to um, a specific uh, instance for case in point of uh, the uh, engine temperature and we can pretty much uh, uh, tell it you know in software like we're, like we're doing right now uh, when you re uh, when the engine reaches uh, X amount say 200 degrees turn the the fan on full uh, and in, in which case we're gonna you know we'll mess around with the delay 
uh, and make it turn on faster to make it to make the uh, the the motor uh, stay on longer uh, or or less depends so, so if the temperature goes down uh, then we tweak it so that it reacts to to a, to a lower temperature it's, it's pretty it's not easy but it's f the, the concept is pretty simple well once again this has been um, another video uh, showing you going um, uh, a little deeper into um, um, uh, into modules and, and the reflash uh, software that goes into these uh, components so um, again uh, thanks for being with us and, and thank you for watching okay everybody welcome to another video uh, this is part three of a um, Arduino um, motor control circuit uh, and software that we've been um, presenting here uh, so this one has the added what we're gonna, what we're gonna do here was we're gonna add a um, a sensor a, a temperature switch in our previous videos we showed uh, the difference between modules and uh, computers like an ECM a module is a computer that uh, tends to control uh, one or two inputs or, or, or I should say one or two components uh, it may have a couple of inputs, it may have one or two or three, but very few outputs as opposed to, for example, a TCM uh, transmission control module or an engine control module. In this video, we're going to use the, an Arduino module board. Um, and we, uh, since this is almost a computer, pretty much, it, it has multiple inputs, multiple outputs. But th in this particular case, we're just going to use one. And we're gonna we're gonna try it's control a, a motor a small motor which represents um, a radiator fan it could be a, a blower motor for the uh, for the air conditioning and so on and so forth so we're gonna just gonna use a motor a small motor as a representation of the uh, component that we are going to co um, to control we're also going to use the driver 100 uh, module that we manufacture uh, this is going to be attached to the uh, to the Arduino board. Uh, so the driver 100 uh, is pretty much an output transistor, which can uh, it can take a lot of uh, current. So pretty much the Arduino board by itself can do that. It's just the brains, pretty much. So we're going to use the driver 100 to be able to control the actual uh, radiator fan uh, motor, uh, which is represented here by a small motor. A quick gl a glance at the wiring diagram, uh, we can see the... Um, uh, the driver 100 board attached to pin number 13 and ground. Uh, this the the green uh, lead is the one that that actually controls the output transistor. Uh, the driver 100 board it's con um, that is th th that module is control uh, it's uh, connected to the fan and that's the one that's going to control the motor uh, directly. Um, so um, and then you also have pin number two. If you look at it, th that's a temperature switch which is connected. Uh, to uh, pin number two and ground so pretty much we're going to use a switch a toggle switch here to represent the actual uh, temperature switch temperature switches are two lead components and it, they're they're connected exactly as you can see here you know w w one leg uh, one terminal one pin is connected to ground and the other one is connected to the to the input uh, of of whatever module it is that you are in this particular case we're using the uh, uh, an Arduino board uh, but it's pretty much if it's an automotive uh, um, uh, um, module, it's it, it'll be connected to whichever module it's it's connected to. I mean, th this thing could be could control pretty much anything, and it is widely used on on in automotive uh, applications. So here on screen, we can actually sh uh, see the setup uh, with the Arduino, the driver 100 board, and everything connected together. It's a very simple connection. Uh, and it, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle this, this switch on and off and it's just going to turn the motor on and off. Um, in, in other videos, we're going to show you how to, do, uh, how to do this in a different way and so that um, we are going to connect a temperature sensor, not a temperature switch. So it's not going to be an on and off sensor. It's going to be a switch. And as the temperature, as the temperature uh, increases or decreases, it's going to increase the PWM uh for the for the fan which is exactly what computers do these days and then it's going to be it's going to regulate the, the the speed of the fan motor to be able to blow more or less air as needed this we're going to see in, in future videos the idea behind uh, this video series is just to show you the actual software how it's it's done uh, it's actually how it actually controls um, all these components
Now here on screen we are going to analyze the uh, the software uh, which is the one that's doing all the controlling through the board through the Arduino board and the driver 100. Uh, again as we've said before um, all um, Arduino software you know, it's, it's the same whether you go with an Arduino whether you go into the software for, for an actual ECM or a module uh, it's actually composed of two parts the setup part and the loop part pretty much so um, as you can see this next diagram we can see uh, in red um, it's the the actual setup part and it actually sets up uh, all these pins in this particular case pin number two it's set as an input and this is uh, uh, with a pull up meaning that th this this one connects to ground and that's what it when it does whatever it has to do so it's a pull up uh, pin pin number two and pin number 13 is it is an output pretty much uh, now it w th I mean we are the ones that are actually doing this it's not that it's just we in software you do that and you do you can do whatever you want later on in the loop part which is the one that keeps repeating itself uh, we um, as you can see uh, sensor va uh, va VAR var that's uh, that start it starts um, it stands for variable so the sensor variable is, is the one that's going to be used to turn the fan on and off that's the one that's going to be compared uh, uh, further down where it says code uh, we put a little, little little loop bracket in there so that and it says if sensor value is uh, is high um, then um, turn the fan on high or low and this we're, to, we're, lo we're looking at pin number 13 okay so if sensor of value is high okay turn it low okay if sensor or else okay um, turn pin number 13 high and th this is how this is the output of, of pin number 13 which is actually seen by the driver 100 and that's uh, that's what happens it turns the uh, uh, the, the the motor on or off uh, and everything happens here in code in this particular little code here you know it does pretty much everything and this is exactly the same uh, software that controls the uh, uh, automotive temperature uh, uh, sensor and fans and whether it's that or uh, the fuel pump th these days the fuel pump is not on and off it's, uh, they're controlled by um, a P by PWM uh, output. We're going to do PWMs later on in another video, but this is just an on and off uh, deal. So pretty much, and it's also the blower motor, for example, for the air, air conditioning. It's it's turned on like this, on and off. The uh, air conditioning compressor is on and off like this. Uh, almost a lot of lots of components are turned on and off using this exact uh, scheme, you know, in software. So uh, again, but we're just showing you a, a an example. Of how this this is done in 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 regular automotive uh, um, manufacturing, and as always, we appreciate you guys uh, watching our videos and learning. And um, again, thank you, thanks again for watching. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video. Uh, today's video, we are going to uh, expose a, a project uh, which is an Arduino drive-by wire controller conversion. So this is pretty much. Um, it is a conversion uh, not meant to be driven on on the streets but it is if you uh, if you're planning to convert uh, you know your um, a track vehicle um, so it, it's it's pretty much how uh, a drive-by-wire system controls the motor on the throttle as usual the uh, these uh, series uh, also includes a sketch and uh, you have to request it because we cannot post a sketch on the description of the video it just doesn't allow the the, the little symbols you know in the in the program to to be uh, placed on the on the sketch so anyway anyhow email us and request the the sketch as needed drive-by wire systems have been around for a couple of decades now uh, they were first introduced in, in trucks the big semis uh, it is uh, pretty much a throttle with a dual or triple TPS and a motor as you can see on the animation that I did a few years back um, there, there's a dual TPS and there's a motor on the other side, and pretty much everything is computer control. And we're going to expose that later on on the video here. The drive-by wire system has basically a, th a an accelerator pedal position sensor, which could be, um, as you can see on screen, could be down at the, the accelerator pedal, or it could be even by linked by a cable 
uh, to the engine compartment where the, there is another type of sensor, which is the same deal. It's just, you know, linked by a cable. But anyhow, uh, the idea is to take measurements, uh, inputs from the accelerator pedal position sensor, which is a potentiometer, and then uh, uh, adjust the throttle motor uh, accordingly. As you can see on screen, uh, we, we show you a potentiometer. This is exactly, uh, this is more or less, you know, what you would see inside the throttle. Uh, of course, this is a different, uh, this, is, this is a manual potentiometer. It's a panel potentiometer that we're going to use here uh, in place of the throttle position sensor, but the principle is pretty much the same. Uh, you press the throttle, you move the potentiometer, and then it, it gives a signal to the, to the computer, and the computer uh, actuates the motor uh, depending on the aperture and the rate of change of the potentiometer. As always in this series, we're going to show you, we're showing you the diagram right now. Uh, which shows you a potentiometer, how you uh, pretty much how you connect it to the uh, uh, to the Arduino board. Uh, the Arduino output is connected to a driver 100, uh, uh, which is a um, is the final output transistor uh, for the uh, so that you can actually drive that that, that motor by itself. The Arduino is not going to drive the motor, so you need an output transistor. We um, we have our uh, the driver 100 is a kit that we actually make and uh, we sell on our website. So pretty much uh, it, it is meant for uh, as a final output uh, for the Arduino board. You can get your own uh, that you don't have to get it from us. So there's a bunch of uh, output transistor drivers that you can get. But ours you can get in kit and you can get in completed form. As you can see on screen on, in this uh, close up of the uh, of the diagram. Um, you, one side of the potentiometer uh, goes to the uh, to ground, and the other side goes to the five volt reference. And pretty much, this is the way they work in in, in automobiles. So you have a five volt reference and a ground provided by the ECM. In our case, the Arduino is the one that serves as the uh, as the engine control module. Pretty much, that's the one that's going to control the output uh, driver transi uh, transistor, the uh, driver 100. And the center tab of the uh, Arduino is connected, in this case, to the A2, to the analog 2 on, on the Arduino. Now going on to the um, to the sketch, to the Arduino program, which is called the sketch. Uh, the first part of the program is always going to be the setup. And this is pretty much the side that pretty much sets uh, the different outputs. In this particular case, we only have one output. So it's, this is pin number 13. And you can see, you can see, we set it as an output uh, with a 9600 uh, baud rate uh, communication. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. No big deal there. The second part of the um, of the sketch program is the loop. This is where the uh, uh, everything happens. Which is this, this is where the magic happens. And the the upper side, you would see how we also set the different inputs. Uh, this is how we set the uh, analog uh, on pin number two. Uh, then later, further down, and as you can see in the close-up here, uh, this is this is the important side. Uh, and as you can see, we have a variable declaration of throttle opening, uh, which is a variable that we declare, you know. Uh, and this throttle opening, it equals the sensor value, which is the potentiometer, times 100. And through trial and error, I was able to figure out that 100 uh, is, is the right number and we'll, we'll explain that further down uh, pretty much then the first if uh, uh, sub you know it, it, it the if sensor value uh, is greater than 0.1 so if sensor value is greater than than ground if that's what it that's what it's saying uh, then digital write high means on uh, then the, there's a delay in microseconds and this the delay it's in uh, it's in microseconds in this particular case uh, and it's a throttle opening, which is the, the variable that we see on the top, times 100. And this is pretty much what it's going to determine the high, in, in other words, the on time that the throttle is going to remain open. This We're talking about PWM control here, okay? Uh, and the further down, you see uh, digital right low. Uh, and then there's the opposite. This 500 minus the throttle opening. And this is, this is the negative side of the, of the PWM. For those of you that understand PWM, uh, you have a positive side, which is the one that says open, and then there's a negative side, which is the one that says close, and they both have to be uh, synchronized together. And this is this is what this server team does pretty much. Uh, further down, you see uh, an else if um, value is equal to zero, then it take it low. So pretty much, if if the 
throttle position sensor is grounded, meaning all the way, closed all the way, then low, then turn off the uh, the motor. So as you can see, this simple feedback uh, uh, subroutine on the on the software pretty much does everything. It, it creates a, the PWM output. Uh, it creates the uh, the the, the uh, input it, it, it from from the from the potentiometer from or from the accelerator pedal position sensor. Now we're going to see how uh, this whole thing works in actual in practice. First, we make our connections. Uh, we connect the Arduino board to the potentiometer, uh, the driver 100 board, and pretty much we're set to go. And as you can see, uh, you're going to hear a winding no noise from the uh, uh, from the uh, from the motor, and this is because uh, the for for you not to hear the winding noise, you would have to increase the frequency above the hearing range. This is very important. So you, what you're what you're hearing now is the uh, uh, resonant frequency inside the motor uh, at the uh, uh, at the throttle, uh, and so you would have to go above 18,000 or 18 kilohertz. Uh, 18, 20, 25,000 kilohertz would be nice. Uh, the Arduino uh, software is it's not meant for that right now, so you pretty much uh, will hear that whining noise. But the, the idea here is to show you the principle behind how this whole thing is controlled, how it's done. Also on screen now, we made a, a small video of the actual potentiometer. Uh, this is what the Arduino sees as you step on the throttle, or, or as you change the potentiometer, and you increase the the, the, the voltage uh, from zero to five volts. Remember, this is a five volt reference potentiometer, which is the same as a, on a car. Uh, it would be a dual potentiometer for redundancy. They use dual or even triple potentiometers, uh, but it's this is pretty much how it is, you know. Uh, we, we're not going to use dual. We don't. We don't need the redundancy. This is not going to be a system that's going to be on the road. So, uh, anyhow, so this is what what the Arduino sees. As usual, we thank you for uh, tuning into our channel, ADP Training, where we expose you to all kinds of automotive technology concepts. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And um, thank you for watching. This was it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, analyze a project uh, on an Arduino automotive high beam controller with delay. Uh, in other words, this, this is one of those um, most cars today, maybe not most cars, but lots of them have the uh, a high beam. Uh, it's like a small uh, photosensitive eye in, fr on, in front of the, uh, of the, of the dash that actually senses an incoming car with a high beam or with any headlight and it lowers your high beams uh, as needed. This project also has within the software inside the, the sketch for the Arduino a delay. The delay is just to wait um, uh, to switch uh, into the low beams if you don't have an incoming car. So if you don't have anything incoming it waits three seconds and it's also you can change that in software as well. Uh, so after three seconds, it switches back to high beams, and you keep on driving. Uh, this project also has an LCD uh, screen. Uh, it is based on a previous video that we have uh, on the Arduino timer. So look for it on our channel uh, so that you get an idea how to inter interconnect uh, the uh, LCD uh, display with the Arduino. This module, uh, the, the whole project, the way, we, the way we actually implemented it, it allows you to drive with the high beams on all the time. Uh, and it switches to low beams as soon as you have an incoming car. Uh, it has an automatic um, three second switch off r a delay. Uh, so if you have an incoming car, it'll switch to low beams. It waits three seconds and it switches back into high beam. Um, you can build the project from the $20 uh, and it also it, uh, the field point is uh, directional so you have to make sure that whenever you mount it on your dash it's uh, mounted properly so that it actually senses the incoming uh, uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle vehicle's headlight. As mentioned before we'll be using a 16 by 2 LCD uh, display. Uh, this display it's a 16 by 2 because it, it has 16 characters 
um, across by two characters, by two, pretty much by two sentences, you know, um, um, vertically. So they're, they're very common. Uh, I just purchased, as a matter of fact, we just purchased uh, about five of them uh, from Amazon uh, for about the eleven dollars. So they're very inexpensive. Uh, as I said before, you can build this whole project for under twenty dollars. Now on screen now we're going to mention uh, this is typical of the uh, photodiode sensitivity field range. Uh, basically these uh, components are very 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 sensitive and they are they have a directional field of view. So if, if it's not pointed in the direction of the incoming car properly, uh, it's going to it's not going to, it's not going to sense the high beams or the low beams from the incoming cars. Uh, so uh, mind be mindful be mindful of the sensitivity field range of the photodiode again as you can see on screen you mount uh, the gadget on the dash uh, you could mount, mount it in front of the car as well but this this is going to be more of a hassle for, for you so you mount it in front of the dash and uh, position uh, the the gadget uh, with the photodiode pointing in the, in the right direction and you're going to have to do some ex experimentation on that uh, so that it actually senses the uh, incoming vehicles properly. On screen now is the interconnection between the LCD screen and the uh, Arduino. Uh, watch the previous video on the Arduino timer module that we have. Uh, it'll show you how to do the interconnection uh, in a very detailed uh, way. Uh, the potentiometer that you see is just for contrast adjustment and nothing else. We're also going to be using an Arduino Mega 2560 because that's the one we normally use for our projects. Uh, it's probably overkill for this project. You could also uh, use an Arduino Nano as you can see on screen. These are tiny, uh, inexpensive. Uh, they're like 2 or $3 each. Uh, so an Arduino Nano has enough capabilities to do everything that we're doing here. Uh, we're also going to use, as we mentioned before, a potentiometer, a 10K potentiometer, 5K, anything between 5 and 50K will do. Uh, potentiometer is used for a contrast adjustment on the LCD. Uh, we also are using a, a relay card. Uh, you're probably going to see a multi-relay card. I think we're using a two-relay card for the video. Uh, we're only going to use one relay. So one single relay card, again, very inexpensive uh, units. Uh, it's enough for you to do uh, um, uh, your headlights, you know, play around with your, with, uh, so you could, you could do the switching right through the relay. Uh, on screen, you can also see an 8 relay card, They're also inexpensive, uh, but really, unless you're doing something else with the Arduino, uh, one relay is enough uh, for whatever it is that you're doing. Today's headlights are, some of them are HIDs and this and that, some of them don't even have a, a separate a bulb for the, uh, uh, for the high beams, uh, it's this little motor in there, like they controls the high beam and low beam. You can you can play around with this stuff and do whatever you want. Uh, on screen now, uh, it's a, a a photodiode. This is the the heart of the system of what we're doing now. Uh, this is the device that actually it's a little tiny device that senses. Uh, it looks like an LED, uh, but it's a diode, and it senses uh, the 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 light, the incoming light from the uh, uh, from the headlight from the incoming car and that's what actually tells the Arduino the Arduino does its stuff Now on screen we're showing you uh, a way for us to replicate uh, the headlights from an incoming car So we, what we did what I actually did was I, I took a small uh, spotlight and used it as the actual headlight uh, To to be able to test it you know with uh, in the lab here. So again uh, by turning the the uh, the small spotlight on and off, uh, we can replicate uh, or mimic an incoming vehicle uh, uh, for, to test our circuitry. Very quickly, we're going to show you something else that it, it doesn't really have anything to do with it, with this video, but we're going to just show it to you so that if you see it in the future, you're going to know what we're talking about. Uh, our, the Arduino software itself, the software that the IDE that's used to uh, program the Arduino, also has a serial plotter. And on screen there, there we're showing you how to actually reach because most guys that they don't really know that it exists and it's there. And what it does is it actually plots, and we're going to show you that on the, in this next video. Uh, it actually plots the the signal from the uh, from the photodiode 
uh, as, and what we're doing is we're turning on and off that spotlight that we showed you before uh, to mimic and this is exactly in 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 uh, in circuitry in in signal this is the waveform that's outputted by the um, uh, by the uh, photodiode and this is this is you don't need any extra software for this it's within the, the Arduino uh, free IDE the software that you use to program the Arduino uh, so again very serious a very nice tool that that the system that they actually implemented it on that we're not going to use the uh, analog input for for this project uh, we are not we're going to use the regular digital uh, so it's going to be an on and off as, as you can see on screen as soon as uh, the signal drops down like that uh, it's pretty much that's it. It, it it'll sense that it, it'll sense it as an incoming vehicle and it'll switch the high beam down to low beams okay next uh, quickly we're going to go by, again mention as we mentioned before this is the uh, uh, um, the Arduino um, LCD uh, the Arduino and the LCD uh, screen interconnect uh, watch the previous video uh, for you to gain an idea of exactly what to do uh, again we're using one relay so on screen now you can see the whole circuitry minus the Arduino we're going to show you later on uh, so you can see the photodiode in there make sure you connect a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in there okay one side of the um, uh, of the photodiode is going to be connected to the um, it's a 1 mega ohm uh, resistor that actually on the other side goes to the 5 volt and the uh, the rest of this of the one leg you know for the uh, photodiode goes into pin number 12 uh, of the Arduino now again it's a simple circuit uh, all you need is a photodiode they're like I don't know a couple of cents you know no more than 25 cents uh, the other side of the Arduino is pin number 10 that's the actual pin the IO pin input output pin that controls the in one or the relay on the relay card and this is the one that's going to switch between high beam and low beam uh, as you can see on screen uh, the actual uh, uh, headlight switch feeds the relay with a relay normally off you're going to have the the high beam um, uh, actuated in other words you know the low beam is going to be off and as soon as you get a, a you, you sense a an incoming uh, uh, car uh, the photodiode would actually tell the Arduino the, Ardu the Arduino is going to switch on pin number 10 uh, that's going to turn off uh, turn on the relay and it's going to switch uh, the unit into uh, uh, in into a into a low beam okay so remember you don't have to do anything because you already have the headlights in in high to begin with uh, so there's nothing you, this is an automa automatic system that switches the, the high beam um, high and low or I should say you keep it on high beam and it turns the, 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 high, the, the headlights into a low beam uh, when, uh, when it senses the incoming uh, uh, vehicle and it goes back into high beam and so the only reason why this works uh, uh, without much uh, you know build up is the fact that the relay controls everybody and there's no way that that relay could actually be actuated uh, on, on both sides so the relay pretty much it's either one it's either off which it's a it's, it's like a like a shunt like a pass through uh, for the high beam uh, or if it's if it's latched then the low beam is actuated okay and not the high beam now on screen just to show you this is the entire circuit for the for the whole project uh, uh, basically the display it's connected separately uh, actually at the same time but it's it's uh, they, it uses totally the separate pins again watch the previous video that we've mentioned before for you to know how to, how to the whole the whole thing is connected next we're going to show you how this whole thing works and basically uh, you, we, we have a small LED uh, on video it's a blue LED this this LED signifies uh, the actual uh, headlight so rather than use a headlight it doesn't really matter because the relay can actually provide 40 amps uh, worth of, of, of current so uh, in this particular case it's just triggering this the small LED uh, so that you have an idea of the whole uh, functioning the operation of the whole circuit so 
uh, and also uh, everything it's in software everything it's uh, it's made so that it actually displays the state um, of the of the headlight uh, if uh, as soon as the uh, as you can see as soon as the uh, uh, the high beam uh, uh, goes off uh, it, and we turn off the the the, uh, the spotlight on, on on top of us that we show you before it wastes three seconds before it turns them on again and this is typical of uh, incoming traffic systems uh, that control the headlights on, on cars today. This uh, uh, unit is useful if you have an older vehicle or if your vehicle has an issue with the high beams and you do lots of traveling. Uh, it really, you know, all you got to do is, you know, spend 20 bucks or even less than that uh, and build the unit, uh, build the system, connect it to your vehicle, and that's it. And you have a, a, an automatic uh, high beam, low beam uh, system. And now, right after this clip, we're going to show you um, actually the the sketch that comes with the uh, with this with this project. Uh, it's uh, it's all the way at the end of this video. Uh, again, you can email us if you need uh, any of these uh, uh, diagrams or, or, or the sketch itself. Uh, just give us a send us an email, and we'll take care of you. Uh, again, we are always uh, thankful for you guys watching our videos. We're doing a whole series of Arduinos uh, uh, projects that are useful uh, for whatever it is. We have so many. We have a, a, a whole list of, of these videos that we're going to do. So stay tuned to our channel, ADP Training. And again, thank you for watching. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to uh, discuss uh, building an Arduino um, headlight off timer with LCD display. Now what exactly is that? Well, it's that's exactly what it is. It's a it's a headlight timer that you push a button uh, and it turns a light, the the headlights on um, uh, until for whatever uh, amount of seconds you set it to uh, in in software. Uh, and uh, it allows you to reach your front door, uh, open the door and and, and go in. And then it turns off the, the headlights automatically. This is standard now in, in lots of vehicles, but the idea here is for older vehicles or even for your own car. A lot, a lot of, lots of times the headlights, it's managed by the, um, um, the body control module. Body control mo module goes down. Sometimes it's fine, the rest of it, but it's just that the headlights, is not, it doesn't work. And so this particular feature would actually over bypass that and it would allow you to uh, rather than buy a body control module for $400 uh, you can just implement this for under $20 uh, and, and, and that's it and be done. Other applications for this particular circuit are also uh, when you combine it we're not going to show that on this video but if you combine it if you combine this circuit with a uh, Wi-Fi uh, shield for the Arduino uh, then you can use your own app and be able to turn the lights on, on and off uh, from inside your house for, for whatever reason. I mean, who knows why you would do want to do that? Uh, but but it is it is possible to do it from from your own cell phone uh, through uh, through the internet, uh, you, having Wi-Fi, or even from somewhere else, anywhere else in the world, if you want to. Um, I could only think of one possible application would be if you're not home and you're traveling, uh, you can pretty much turn the lights on and off. Um, from wherever you are, anywhere in the world, and some, you know, people, your neighbors are going to think, well, there's somebody there, so uh, it's not an empty home. We'd also like to say that this particular uh, project is based on the Arduino Timer module video that we have on our channel, ADP Training, here on YouTube. Okay, so uh, basically, look it up on our on our channel, ADP Training, Arduino Timer module. Uh, and, and that particular uh, video discusses how to interconnect uh, the LCD screen display uh, so that you can use it with this particular project and many of the projects that you were going to be doing using an LCD screen. Here on screen you can see the uh, Arduino Mega 2560. Uh, this is one possible board that you can use. It's about uh, 12 to $15 today. Uh, they're going down you know pretty much every every couple of months they, they keep going down you can also use an Arduino Nano which is a smaller board uh, again these the Nanos are even cheaper than that uh, so depending on what you're gonna do uh, you can use either or 
We're also going to need a 10K potentiometer here. Any, anything from 5 to 50K will do. Uh, but a, the potentiometer uh, is used for um, adjusting the contrast on the LCD screen. On screen now, you, as you, can, you can see the Arduino, um, the way you interconnect the LCD screen to the Arduino and the potentiometer. And this is just for reference, it's covered in the, in the video that we mentioned before um, on the Arduino uh, simple counter timer. Uh, so th this is the way you basically connect the display to the Arduino and then uh, for uh, later on we're going to go into uh, the details on how to connect the uh, relay uh, the relay cards uh, on screen you can see a, a single relay card we are actually using a dual relay card it's, it's just the same deal it's just you have two relays you also have and there are a dime a dozen they're very inexpensive too an eight relay board card uh, these things are really inexpensive uh, again for under twenty dollars you'll be able to uh, build this project um, next, you can see the LCD screen that we uh, that we're going to be using. This is a standard uh, 16 by 2. In other words, 16 character characters across and two lines of characters. Uh, and, and that's just the way uh, you reference. Uh, uh, you refer to these uh, display uh, LCD displays. They're very inexpensive. You could, for ten dollars, you could probably pick a few of them. Uh, they they. Prices fluctuate and they keep coming down, so it doesn't, you know, whatever I say here, it's it's not going to be valid in a few months from now. Next is a diagram of the interconnection between the Arduino and the relay card and the headlight. Uh, we are using, uh, for reference, uh, we're, only sh we're only showing you one headlight. Uh, once you build one, you can pretty much do whatever you want and you can uh, tweak the software. And interconnect the rest of the relays, and you can pretty much control how uh, as 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 many headlights as you as you want to. Now on screen, uh, we can see that we control the headlight through one relay. The on screen right now, you can see the uh, the relay. It's uh, th that's a normally that's a normal position. So uh, I'm gonna call it the normally not connected or not uh, non latched state for the relay. Uh, and this is pretty much uh, your ground is going to come from the headlight switch. It depends. Sometimes you get a power feed from the headlight switch. So it depends on the system that you have. You're going to have to uh, think about this f depending on the system that you have. So, well, But the basic pr principle is that one side, the feed from the headlight switch goes through the relay when it's not activated and it activates the headlight. The other side of the headlight is connected to the 12 volt uh, feed uh, from from the fuse box. Um, now, if the system has a headlight switch that provides power, then you're going to have to uh, the other side of the of the headlight is going to have going to be connected to ground. Uh, obviously, you know. Uh, so, but anyhow, it doesn't really matter. You know, you you make up you you, you know study the system and then you you're going to you'll be able to rewire the system no problem. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that uh, with the relay not latched. Uh, you have the headlight controls the, the headlight switch controls the controls the headlight. As soon as you turn the Arduino, uh, you, you push the button on the Arduino, it'll turn, uh, it'll latch the relay as you can see on screen. Uh, it'll feed ground through the other side. Remember the headlight is going to be off. You got home, uh, you open the door, you push the button on your timer. Uh, the headlight is going to turn on through the relay. Uh, using the Arduino as a timer uh, for however many seconds you program the system to uh, and it allows you to reach your front door, open it and go inside and then it will turn off automatically. Uh, so again, uh, later on uh, in this next uh, diagram we see the whole system uh, pretty much uh, interconnected. You can use this as a, as a reference uh, for, your, uh, for your project uh, and it's basically the same deal. Uh, we're using a separate Arduino uh, schematic uh, in green here, uh, but this is pretty much, um, I believe that we are using uh, pins number uh, 12 uh, for the push button and number 13 uh, for, the, uh, for the relay. Uh, so here on screen we can see a close-up of, uh, of the actual uh, Arduino board, pins number 10 and 12. So 12, uh, we're going to use it for the button, and that's how we have a program on the, on the sketch. 
uh, which is the program that goes into the Arduino. And number 10 uh, is, the, is an output for the relay card. That's the one that activates the relay card. Uh, the rest of the, uh, of the pins are used for the LCD screen. On the left hand side you see how the Arduino is connected to the LCD screen. You see all the pinouts in there that only pertains to the LCD screen and the potentiometer and so on and so forth. Watch our, our other video uh, that relates to the, uh, uh, to the Arduino timer so that it explains with very uh, detailed, it gives you a detailed explanation on how to connect the LCD screen to the Arduino. Next, we're going to show you um, in, um, uh, in real life how this whole thing works. We are using an, uh, an LED, a small uh, blue LED, as the headlight. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have a big bul uh, bulky headlight to do the demo. Uh, besides, the, the brightness will probably be a, a problem. Anyhow, so uh, the, the LED uh, coming on and off, actually coming on, when you push the button and off when the timer expires and we set the timer in this particular uh, example to five seconds you can pretty much set it in software to uh, as ever as whatever uh, many seconds you need uh, and that all depends on how far you are from your front door and and what you need so uh, do some uh, experimentation in there and once you have this thing set to your needs uh, then it's pretty much set uh, anytime you get to your front door, just push that button. When the vehicle is off, you you already have your keys with you and all that. And if you want uh, to give it a little bit more time, so that uh, it gives you time for you to exit the car, uh, go grab your keys, put it in your pocket, and lock the door, whatever. Say you normally need uh, f uh, I don't know 20 seconds to reach your front door, or uh, give it an extra. 10 seconds or an extra 20 seconds, or give it 40 seconds, give it two minutes, give it whatever, whatever you need. Okay, so this is uh, it's pretty much just a, it's a straightforward timer for your headlights. Uh, by the way, you can use this timer for whatever you want. Uh, in other videos, we are going to uh, um, uh, go into uh, using something somewhat similar to control a bunch of different things like, like um, a sprinkler system and uh, you name it, so on and so forth. Uh, at the end of the video, we you're go also going to see um, the sketch that we are using for this particular uh, project. Uh, you can copy the sketch from here. We can post the sketch on the, the on the description for the video. It doesn't YouTube doesn't le let us do that. Uh, you can also email us if you want. Uh, if you want me to send you the the uh, sketch uh, your way, just email me uh, at the email on the on the video, and uh, I'll be glad to send it your way or whatever. Uh, diagrams you want. Uh, again, uh, we appreciate you tuning on, on to our YouTube channel ADP Training. Uh, as usual, um, subscribe if you can to our website too. You get free stuff when you subscribe to our website. And uh, so, without uh, you know any more um, delays, you know, thank you for watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to expose the uh, an Arduino LCD infrared RPM meter. Now, this particular project, uh, it's included in many uh, other of our videos. Uh, in other words, the applications for this uh, project are uh, pretty much infinite. An infrared RPM uh, meter or tachometer, uh, it's part of, a, of uh, many different circuits. For example, um, if you want to control the speed of a, of a water pump, uh, that's one possible application. Almost every um, automotive system uh, today has uh, some kind of a uh, fuel pump uh, uh, speed control f for the fuel pump. And it, it pretty much has to do with the uh, demand uh, of the engine. Uh, at a higher demand, for example, during acceleration, uh, you need more fuel. So the RPM or the revolution of the uh, fuel pump is going to increase. And this is all control by the ECM. So this particular circuit, it's part of a of what would be included uh, inside the ECM. Uh, of course, you can include this for anything that needs some kind of, a, of an RPM-based uh, demand uh, circuitry. Now, the heart of the system, it's, the, it's an infrared uh, tr uh, transmitter receiver. Uh, now, these little gadgets, you can pretty much pick them up for next to nothing. This, this particular one, it was $2.99 from Amazon. Uh, if you buy them in quantities, uh, so, sometimes you need to, uh, you need, uh, you have a need for an infrared receiver. 
that uh, so you need to put one on each particular component it could be anything it could be uh, uh, an actuator in, in, in a in a sprinkler system it could be anything so these things are very inexpensive we're also going to use uh, a um, an LCD uh, display and we have a one of our videos it's called the simple uh, Arduino simple counter timer where we explain exactly what to do to uh, connect uh, this particular display as you can see on screen uh, this is the actual LCD that we're going to be using these things are again they're very inexpensive they're about three dollars and change uh, if you buy uh, you know four or five of them uh, they're they're pretty much a dime a dozen you know anywhere you go uh, you can pick this up for very very they're very cheap for under twenty dollars and we try to do all of our projects so that um, for under twenty dollars this one this particular one even under ten dollars you can build the whole uh, project we're also going to be using a 10k potentiometer and this is this is for uh, a contrast adjustment uh, we, we explained that in the same video the Arduino timer module that we've uh, that we've uh, mentioned before now to process all the data we're going to be using an Arduino this is an Ardu Arduino Mega 2560 they are eh, around anywhere between nine to twelve dollars fifteen dollars each very inexpensive even cheaper than that uh, would be the Arduino Nano they as you can see they're very tiny so that it's called the Arduino Nano so these things are very powerful the Arduino Nano is for something that doesn't something like this the Mega is probably overkill but the Arduino Nano is even cheaper you can pick them up again for two or three dollars uh, if you buy four or five of them now the heart of the system again is the infrared um, uh, um, if, and the infrared sensor it's a transmitter receiver module the little potentiometer that you see the little pot that you see in uh, in green that's uh, it's a little adjustment you probably need to adjust that halfway they're probably pre-adjusted already uh, you'll know if you go all the way up it, the, it, it makes the, this thing very sensitive and uh, basically one of these uh, LEDs is not an LED it's an infrared LED and the other one is an infrared receiver it's a it's like a transistor so it, it shoots a an infrared a beam and it, it bounces back against an object and then it, the other uh, the other module little uh, LED that looks like an LED is a phototransistor picks it up and it uh, detects it and it outputs a signal there's a little processor in there that actually processes the entire the, the entire signal in our video we're going to be using the chuck of a um, of a, a cordless a drill uh, we also what we did we uh, you, we put a white label uh, on one of the uh, of the slots here as you can see on screen and you're going to see it later on in the video and this is the one that's actually going to reflect the infrared beam and it's going to be bounced back immediately and remember this thing is pretty quick and it's that's, that's what's going to detect uh, the RPM again uh, a a very common use uh, application for this particular project would be motor control where you need to control the speed of a uh, of a motor so that the tachometer would feed the, the Arduino the Arduino senses the RPM and in the RPM uh, the Arduino then uh, controls or modulates the PWM or the pulse width modulation for the for the motor and that's how the speed gets controlled next uh, we see a very simple um, diagram here how to connect the unit uh, the unit has a power and a ground a 5 volt ground these are both provided by the Arduino and it also we're, in this particular sh uh, sketch uh, for the Arduino the sketch is a software that runs the whole uh, the whole deal we're using IO uh, the input output uh, pin number 2 and that's where you're going to feed the signal uh, going into into the Arduino and of course the uh, the other modules 7 8 9 and 10 uh, and I believe four and five they those are the ones that run the LCD uh, again we have another video which is the uh, Arduino timer module where we explain exactly how to connect uh, the LCD next in this few video clips you can uh, as you can see we have the uh, uh, you can see the white slot that we glued onto the uh, uh, the cordless chuck and how it uh, the, the little um, infrared detector detects uh, the rotating chuck it feeds it it feeds the signal into the Arduino and the Arduino is not going to do anything with it for for now in this video it's just going to output uh, uh, an RPM uh, value on the uh, on the LED uh, I'm sorry on the LCD screen another use of this particular module would be to control the speed of a of a lathe or maybe a milling machine anything that controls 
motor speed. This is a very useful um, uh, project. Uh, some of these, uh, some of our, of, of our techs are actually building these things to uh, detect RPM uh, on specific uh, components in, in a car. And all you have to do is just pretty much make a white mark and just point the, uh, uh, the tachometer into the white mark on, say, the uh, vibration, the, the, the harmonic balancer, or it could be even on, a, on the belt. And it'll detect movement, it'll detect RPM. Sometimes you need to detect RPM on a compressor, for example. Uh, the new uh, compressors, the, uh, the um, variable displacement compressors uh, for the air conditioning for cars, uh, you could have an RPM on the pulley itself, but the output of the compressor is not what you would expect. So you need to detect RPM on the compressor and compare it to whatever pressure or, or PWN. The, these compressors are controlled by PWM. So uh, for any technician out there, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is a possible uh, application or use for, for, for this particular project. And next, as you can see, uh, this is the exactly what the L, uh, um, LCD uh, display looks like uh, when we apply uh, the uh, infrared sensor into the chuck of a, of a drill. This is a simple uh, illustration or a simple uh, uh, demonstration of how the, the whole deal works. Uh, anything else you'd have to um, pretty much apply this particular circuit into the whatever it is that you want to control and we're going to explain that in, in other videos how to control a motor how to control you could do anything you want even uh, for example uh, there are times when you need to uh, uh, monitor the speed of a particular component and then turn something on this is this is it this is exactly what you would have to do you would have to use this particular circuit and then on top of that, re pre program into the Arduino itself all the necessary um, add ons so that you can actually turn whatever it is a, a relay card or this or that, a, a transistor, so that you can turn the component on and off. Now, at the end of, uh, of our video, you are going to see the sketch. Uh, it, if you need a sketch, if you, if you, you pretty much copy it off of here. We don't have a, a provision for us to copy sketches on the, on the video itself, in other words, on the description of the video. Uh, so send us an email uh, or whatever you need to do. Uh, you can always copy uh, the sketch from here. And uh, again, send us an email. If you need any, any uh, diagram from, from this particular video, let us know. Make sure you remember the title of the video. Again, uh, we thank you uh, each and every time for you guys watching our video here on our YouTube channel, ADP Training. Uh, so... You know, pretty much, thank you so much uh, for watching our video, and I'll uh, see you next time. This chip. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to um, use an Arduino board. Uh, in this case, we're, we're going to use an Arduino Mega 2560 uh, to actuate door locks, um, power door locks on a, on a car with LCD uh, display. On screen, as you can see, um, this is the Mega 2560 uh, um, Arduino board. Uh, this is a simple display, so you can probably use an Arduino Nano, which is a very tiny board. Uh, it's a lot cheaper as well. Uh, but this board is not this board is not expensive at all. Um, you're talking ten, twelve, fifteen dollars. Anyhow, um, we're also going to need, and you're going to have to watch another video that we have uh, on using. Uh, it's called the Arduino Counter Timer. Uh, where we actually explain how to connect the all these components. So I'm going to have a potentiometer. This is uh, a 10k potentiometer. You can use a 5k, a 20k, even a 50k. Uh, we're also going to use um, a um, an LCD uh, display. This is a dot matrix uh, uh, 16 by 2. Uh, so two lines, 16 characters by two two um, lines of uh, text. This, these are very, very, very common. Uh, you can pick them up uh, very inexpensive. Um, as you can see on screen, uh, that's exactly what they look like. Um, uh, the way to connect it, again, watch our video, which um, it deals with uh, connecting. It's, the, it's titled the Arduino um, Counter Timer uh, Module. Okay, Look it up on our channel and you, you're going to see it. Uh, we're also going to use a dual relay. This is a single relay board that you see on screen. 
Um, you can you can buy these things. They're very very inexpensive too. For ten dollars, you can probably get five dual relay boards. Uh, so these are ready ready to go. Uh, just connect it to the Arduino as you're going to see on the diagram later on. Uh, and then I'll explain, you know, how the whole deal works. Anyhow, you may also use, as you can see also on screen, which we're not using, well you could also use a transistor board uh, for the Arduino. And these are nice because they don't have a movable a solid state. Uh, so you also, uh, they're nice because you don't have the uh, inductive kickback from the solenoid. Uh, it's not going to affect the circuit as much if, uh, on, you know, since you're going to use a relay board. Uh, but relays are cheap. This is a little bit more expensive. Nevertheless, uh, all these things are very inexpensive. So you can uh, you can make a, a um, um, uh, an, an Arduino power door lock uh, for your car, for your vehicle. If you don't have it, or if, or if, if you maybe you have a vehicle that goes into a body module. And is shot, you know. So this is very useful for that. A body module in today's um, automobile is very expensive. So uh, for less than twenty dollars, you can build this circuit, uh, and, and it'll it'll work just as well. And you may even connect it uh, in the future. You may may be able to connect it to the internet and be able to lock and unlock your your car from from your cell phone. Now on screen, uh, as you can see, this is a Wi-Fi shield uh, for an Arduino. Uh, again, this this stuff is not really expensive, so uh, this this is incredible. We're not going to show this on uh, on this video, uh, but it, it is a possibility. Once you connect an Arduino to your vehicle, uh, and and you also use the Wi-Fi shield, uh, you'll be able to uh, un lock and un unlock the uh, your door locks uh, from your phone, from your cell phone, provided that that you're close enough to the house. Uh, to your home to be able to or to any Wi-Fi network you know because you need the, the Arduino needs to be connected to to the to the internet and you'll be able you'll have access to your door locks uh, if by building this particular gadget uh, using the Wi-Fi shield we're not going to show you this um, on on this video but rest assured we're going to be showing stuff like this in the future and this also applies to uh, this 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 video uh, also has applications if you want to apply it to your uh, to your headlights, for example, where you want to turn uh, your headlights on and off, you even turn the car on and off from your from your from the internet. Uh, so the possibilities are endless. As you can see on screen, this is it, this this is the inner connection that you're going to do. This is all explained uh, on our previous video. Uh, the Arduino simple timer counter. Um, so we're not going to explain that here. And uh, basically, what it is is that you have a potentiometer. Uh, connected for contrast uh, for the screen um, you may need to adjust the con contrast in uh, uh, for whatever reason you know because of this uh, you're, you're in a, uh, this uh, the day it's a sunny day and you whatever you know you want to con control the contrast for whatever reason and so that that's what the potentiometer is there for uh, and it's connected to the Arduino the pinout is there uh, so again this is all explained on our pr uh, previous video Next, we see the actual complete circuit, you know, all the these boards in, interconnected. Um, we're showing you an, an 8 relay board. Um, I think it's a 6 relay board. So anyhow, but you're only, we're only going to use 2 relays here. Uh, because what's the sense in it? It's the same deal. You know, once you do one, you can do all 4 doors or 2 doors if you have them. Uh, so anyhow, uh, so basically what you have here it's um, once you connect the LCD to the Arduino then you have your display then you have to connect uh, the relay card uh, you have to connect it to the to the Arduino pins uh, there's different pins that we're going to use to control the um, um, the the Arduino if, if you if uh, to control the relay card if you look in the upper right hand side uh, you're going to see the pins that we're going to use uh, to control the relay card the Arduino pins that control the relay card are actually uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, again, uh, the relay card is really controlled by 10 and 11 only. The, so basically the way this is connected, if you look at the, um, uh, the diagram, it's the, the relays, the normally closed position is always grounding uh, the solenoid, the door lock solenoid. Okay. So 
both sides are always grounded. Um, we have another video that explains this. Uh, I forgot how, to, how it's titled, but it, it definitely has to do with door locks. They do a, a search on our channel for door locks, and you're going to see it. Uh, and we explain this particular scheme uh, on, actuating, on uh, um, activating the door locks. And basically, both sides are grounded. When you push a button, uh, it'll actuate, it'll, it'll input to the Arduino the, the state of the buttons on pins number 12 or 13. Those are the two pins. Uh, so 12, 13 are button pins, and which are input pins, and 10 and, and 11 are output pins that control the relay card. So depending on which button you, you press, one is going to actuate, it's gonna, you're going to have an output on either pin 10 or 11. It's going to actuate one of the relay. The other relay is always going to be grounded. So anytime the, the relay in this particular uh, scheme, um, anytime a relay is activated, it'll... Uh, supply 12 volt on one uh, side of the uh, of the solenoid. Um, the other side is already grounded, so you're going to have an actuation either up or down. If you if you activate the other side, the other uh, uh, relay, then the other re uh, side of the um, um, either one or the other is going to be um, 12 volt actuated. Remember, the other the other side is ground. This is how you create uh, a reverse polarity so that you can. Uh, flip the little there's a little motor on these actuators that you know they go back and forth whether there's a little motor or not it doesn't really matter that's how you actually flip polarity uh, on the actuator and that's how actuation happens uh, then uh, if you study the uh, the sketch or the actual software that we we include with this and by the way you can actually request uh, for the software, if you cannot copy copy it from here, we don't we cannot post it on the on the description of the video. It doesn't allow us to do that. So at the end, you see the sketch uh, in this video, and you can actually copy it manually. Copy it if you want. If not, send me an email, and I'll um, I'll send it your way. Anyhow, so uh, on the sketch, there's a, a specific function on the sketch, uh, the software that in the Arduino that actually displays. Uh, the state of of uh, of, um, of the uh, door lock actuator. It'll it'll say either door lock up or down. Okay, but this is totally totally done in the software, um, and this is this is the one that's going to drive the LCD. So the buttons drive the relay card, and the buttons also drive the LCD um, l d display, uh, so that you can see whether the door is up or down. Again, in this little close-up of the circuit, uh, you can see the uh, the actuator, the solenoid actuator. It's not a solenoid; it's actually a little motor inside. Uh, where both sides in yellow, they're always grounded. When one relay gets activated, it applies power on one side, or or if the other one is activated, it applies power on the other side. Since the since both sides are grounded, one side is going to go 12 volt. It's going to actuate one way, or or the other side is going to go 12 volt and it's going to actuate the other way and this is how you create the back and forth movement of the uh, uh, of the solenoid following we can see how the whole the thing works we're gonna we're not going to show you um, how to connect it because it's just going to take too long and this is fairly straightforward to do the connections everything is provided for you in this video as far as the, um, um, the interconnections and all that on these diagrams you can request a diagram from us as well. It's up to you. Whatever you want, just request it in, in, in writing uh, by sending us an email. At the end of the uh, video, we're going to show you our email address. You can go to our website too, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, we have other videos here on Arduinos that deal with how to do a, a door lock actuation but without the display, the LCD display. Uh, this is a new series of videos that we're doing uh, with uh, which include um, how to use an LCD also to view whatever it is that's happening uh, on screen. Uh, so again, we, um, uh, we thank you for watching our, our videos as usual. Uh, request, uh, the, uh, you can request our sketch or the software that goes in the Arduino in writing. You can request the diagrams, whatever you want. Uh, we cannot send you the video because it's uh, just too big, you know, for us to send via, via email. Uh, but you, anything else you can request from us, okay? Uh, so again, um, thank you for watching. Uh, as usual, stay tuned for more videos uh, in the future on Arduino and anything automotive that deals with automotive technology. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching.
Hello everybody, welcome to another video. In this video we are going to analyze an Arduino LCD simple counter timer. Um, we're going to use the Arduino board and this Arduino board, there are many different Arduino boards. This is the Mega 2560 board. You can pretty much, this is a simple project so you can pretty much use um, almost any Arduino out there. Some of these Arduinos are like five for fifteen dollars you know the, for the little Arduino Nano uh, but anyhow uh, this particular project is going to detail how to construct a uh, a counter timer this you can apply to pretty much anything you want in later videos we are going to uh, combine uh, this particular circuit uh, with a bunch of different uh, add-ons uh, like relayed, uh, relay cards uh, transistor cards and so on and so forth so that you can control um, a bunch of different uh, uh, peripherals uh, maybe a sprinkler system uh, an alarm system you name it you can apply this to a thousand and one different uh, uh, components so in other words the applications for this particular circuit uh, th and this is a combination of circuit and sketch uh, which is the, the program that actually goes inside the Arduino uh, the combination and the application of uh, this particular circuit are pretty much infinite. Um, again, uh, keep to stay tuned to our channel, ADP Training, uh, for our, uh, the bunch of different videos that we're going to post that deal with this particular circuit with a combination of uh, specific add-ons. Uh, again, add-ons that control whatever it is that you're trying to uh, uh, to manage. Uh, uh, it could be a sprinkler, fan motor, it could be uh, any, anything. So uh, again, stay tuned to our channel. Now, the first component we're going to need, uh, it's a simple potentiometer. This is a variable resistor. A 10K uh, potentiometer is fine. It'll do. If you have a bunch of 5Ks and 50Ks and what have you, uh, 20Ks, that'll work uh, so long as it's not too, you know, too high. So anyhow, 1 meg is probably too much. Uh, and this is this uh, potentiometer. It's uh, used to control uh, the um, contrast of the LCD screen. So once it's there, you're just going to use it once to control the L LCD screen, and and you're done. Next, you're going to see the LCD screen that we're going to use. It's a 12 by 16 character LCD screen. Uh, the display. This is not as in a color LCD. Uh, this is just a black and white. It's a simple LCD, and the idea behind this particular project is to make it inexpensive for you to build. Okay, so these things are very inexpensive. You can pick them up on, on Amazon or any of the uh, um, electronic uh, parts stores for v very inexpensive. Sometimes you get like five of them for twenty bucks. Uh, so it depends on on how um, it depends on what you buy them. So, but anyhow, these are very inexpensive. Uh, it, it's a nice display because it's it's they're very tough. Uh, that's for one. So you, you could put them in a in a high humidity location. Uh, so it could be a, a place where there's uh, lots of cold, uh, where it's very hot. Uh, I have customers uh, in Arizona that use them in the, in the desert for, for stuff that the applications that that has to do with a, a lot of heat. So again, these are tough units and they're very inexpensive. These days you could pick an Arduino 2560 Mega, uh, probably for 12 bucks. Uh, the Nanos are maybe five for 20 bucks. The the uh, display is very inexpensive too. It's about the same deal, six dollars if you buy one. Uh, maybe 20 bucks if you buy five of them. Uh, the potentiometer maybe it's maybe 50 cents, even less if you buy quantities. You know, again for under two for under 20 dollars. You can pretty much for under fifteen dollars. You can maybe even under ten dollars. You can you can build the, the circuit that we are going uh, to discuss here. Uh, and then if you add on a few of these uh, relay boards uh, to control peripherals, uh, you're not going to go above twenty bucks. So again, very inexpensive and very easy to build. Next is the um, uh, the the diagram, the wiring diagram that we're going to use for this particular circuit. Uh, as you can see, we have the potentiometer feeding, uh, feeding on the um, one side of the potentiometer. Of course, could connect to ground. The other side, the other, the other end, is connected to power. In this case, five volt reference provided by the Arduino board. The center tap is all is then connected to pin number three. Pin number three on the um, on the LCD 
is the one that controls the contrast. So again, this is the purpose of the potentiometer. The only purpose is to control the contrast so that you can actually uh, fine tune it uh, in, case, uh, in cases where you have direct sunlight or for whatever reason you need to control the contrast sometimes you can't see it very well sometimes it's too dark sometimes it's too light whatever you know so this is that's the only reason for the potentiometer a, a 10k potentiometer will do 5k will do 20k that's fine too 50k that's okay whatever you have hanging around that's not too high uh, you can use uh, to the right hand side the lower right hand side of the uh, diagram you can see the actual pin assignments um, on the on the uh, the small um, uh, pictorials in there that you can see the DB4 connect to pin number four. That's DB4 on the LCD connected to pin number four on the Arduino. If you study the uh, the diagram a little bit, you know, carefully, you can actually you know it, it's very easy to decipher how the whole thing is connected. It's very simple. Uh, again, um, you're going to connect four pins uh, are going to drive uh, the display. Uh, so that's DB4, 5, 6, and 7, and then the, uh, you have the RS and the enable, the end pin, um, uh, connected to pins number 8 and 9. And that's pretty much it. That's enough. Uh, this board, the Mega 2560, is probably overkill for this particular project. But uh, in the future, we're going to do other projects where you, we're going to show you how to uh, we're gonna use buttons to do this and that you know and that's why we're we're do using this board but if you just want to control a specific component uh, on on a timer like you're gonna see um, in the video later on uh, an Arduino Nano which is very inexpensive will do connected to some kind of a relay card like you saw before uh, so again it's very simple very easy to do just study the diagram it's not too much to explain here so uh, just study, study it um, you can uh, request a whatever you want from this video. You can request it from me uh, at the uh, email address at the end, or go to our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, and you can pretty much uh, get the uh, either my number or my uh, email address from there. Next, we're going to see how this whole thing is connected. Uh, we already we, we've already connected the whole deal for you, so there's no sense in showing you how it how it goes because you already saw it on the diagram, and it's very simple. So pretty much uh, this is how this is how the the, the the timer works. It's a simple timer. Uh, the reason for this video is because we are going to combine this particular video uh, or this particular circuit with uh, other stuff in the future. Uh, again, this. The applications for this particular circuit are immense. You can do lots of stuff with this, you know, from a um, a headlight yeah, on your car that if you have an older vehicle or maybe your vehicle broke, you know, and you want to con control the uh, the headlight um, with a push button and the headlights are on until you get to your, uh, uh, when you turn your vehicle off. Uh, so it allows you to reach your do uh, your front door and open uh, your door and then the, the headlights will turn turn off by themselves. This circuit will do it. You set the timer to whatever you want. Uh, not in this particular video, but in, f in future videos you you're going to see how to do it. Uh, hence the importance of this video. So again, if you're controlling a sprink sprinkler system, controlling... Uh, I have customers who actually th they control the doors for their chicken coops. Uh, to open the chicken coop and close it, believe it or not. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that you could do. Just connect it to a, to a, a, a transistorized or a relay board, and you can control a motor. You can control whatever you want, a water pump, you name it. Anything you can do with this particular circuit for under $10 pretty much. So again, very useful. At the end of this video, um, I'm following you we're going to show you uh, the sketch uh, the only reason why it's here is uh, if you want to copy we, we cannot post a sketch on the um, uh, on the video itself on, on the video description so it doesn't let us do that but if you want to if you want to copy it from here you can do it if you want to send us an email uh, you can also do that so whatever you want to do if you want the sketch just email me and let me know if not just copy it from here and uh, again we uh, appreciate you watching our videos um, we are going to do a series of Arduino videos from now on uh, stay tuned to our channel ADP training and thank you for watching
Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Uh, in this video we are going to um, cover a, an Arduino power door lock controller co conversion. So um, this video is pretty much, uh, it'll make you understand how power door lock uh, work. That's one. And the other, it's in, in the event that you have a, an older vehicle or one that doesn't have power door lock. Pretty much everything these days have, has a power door lock. But if you, for whatever reason, you need to do a conversion, maybe you want to put an alarm in there and you want to know how this thing works, this is it. For this project, we're going to be using a, uh, a door lock actuator, as you see on screen. Uh, there's a bunch of these. Uh, nowadays, you could buy them uh, like uh, aftermarket. So um, there's pretty much um, one would probably fit, fit them all. Uh, as you can see, this one came with, a, with an actual uh, hardware kit. Uh, you're also going to need a um, uh, a switch um, for the to actuate the door locks. We're going to be using a, a PC board switch in, in the in the video, but just letting you know that any switches it it will do will do. Uh, it's a um, normally open switch that you just push, uh, and it'll it'll moment it's momentarily grounds uh, the, the the Arduino board so that the microprocessor can sense the ground. Uh, we're also going to be using a two channel or a two relay um, board uh, PC board. Uh, and of course, we're going to be using the Arduino. Uh, so anyhow, uh, without further ado, let's just continue on and let's, let's show you. Let's go into the sketch, which is the software part of the uh, of the project. So, like in any Arduino sketch, on our we have a bunch of videos on Arduinos. Uh, any Arduino uh, software um, called the sketch is composed of two parts: the setup part and the loop. The setup sets sets up the pins whether they're input or outputs and the loop uh, it's exactly what what it says it, it pretty much it loops out it it's, it's a repeating part of the code that, that keeps repeating on and on and on it never stops as you can see on the setup part we uh, we have pins number six and seven um, arranged as outputs and these uh, two pins are the ones that are going to carry the output and they're going to be they're going to ground uh, they're going to ground the uh, relay card that's pretty much the way it works. So pins number six and seven are outputs. Pins number four and five are inputs from the switches. Uh, right on top, you you see an INT. That's an integer door lock up, integer INT door lock down equals zero. That means ground. Uh, so anyhow, if the output is zero, means ground. That means actuate. Uh, the relay if it's one that means it's a uh, five volt reference which is connected the other side is connected to the f to the reference uh, and so um, or 12 volt whatever it is the relay the, these really relays are connected to 12 volt uh, they're 5 volt actuated but the output is 12 volts that goes to the actuator next is the um, the loop side and this is this is where the magic happens um, and on the loop side if you look at it, it's a pretty straightforward. It says a uh, door lock um, equals a uh, door lock up equals digital read five. That means read door lock switch, which is pin number five, uh, and digital write pin number seven door lock up. So pretty much what it says it's it's uh, whatever you read on on the switch on pin number five, do it on pin number seven. So if you're pressing the switch on five you're going to actuate pin number seven which in turn actuates um, the, the the relay card and it brings the uh, remember only one relay is going to be on at the same time so um, pretty much it, it's pretty straightforward the same happens um, for the uh, for the other pin for, for pin number four a door door a door lock down equals digital read four so if pin number four which is a switch if it's on, if it's grounded, when you press it, uh, then digital read, uh, di digital write six. So that means actuate uh, di um, pin number six. That means uh, pin number six is the relay for the the, uh, the actuator down, uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, it does whatever the, the switch says. That's what that's what the that's what the output pin is going to tell the uh, relay card. And then there is a delay 200. That's 200 milliseconds delay. Uh, it's like a little bit less than um, almost a quarter of a second um, and this is needed so that everything pretty much settles uh, 
uh, but when it comes to uh, the electronics and, and the pulses, you know. Further down, digital right, 6 and 7, and, th and then that's common 1. 1 is a 5-volt reference. That means turn off the relays. So after the, the entire loop runs, whatever, ha whatever is happening, if you're pressing one of the switches, it'll actuate it on and off, you know. Um, uh, door lock up, up, up or down, uh, and then it's going to turn off everybody. Now briefly let's take a look at the wiring diagram for this uh, arrangement and this, this is pretty much uh, as you've seen in other videos similar to the, p to the power windows uh, so this is almost the same what it is is you have two relays they're both grounded when, when everything is off both sides of the motor of the actuator both sides are grounded both uh, wires uh, so pretty much nothing is happening everybody's grounded and that's that's when whenever you press a button then something happens basically basically as you can see here one relay uh, gets actuated which provides 12 volts on one side of the motor and that makes the the actuator either go um, go the but the door locks go up or down uh, either or uh, it doesn't really matter then as soon as you uh, press the other switch then the other side the other relay gets actuated uh, gets activated provides a, a 12 volt to the other side of the motor uh, the other side of the motor is already gr uh, grounded anyways but they're both normally grounded so one side one relay provides power on one side or the other relay provides power on the other other side either or not both at the same time of course otherwise you're going to have power on both sides nothing really happens if that there's no short so basically uh what you see here it, it, this is exactly this is more or less the way power windows work in this project though we do on the on the sketch on the software we put a, a little delay there in the critical part so that you don't burn the motor otherwise the motor burns you know so uh, basically you you don't want to actuate that the, the the actuator for the door locks the same way as the power window because it's not a power window it's a more it's a, it only needs a maybe a, a second or so uh, max you know maybe two seconds max uh, to actuate the, the the door locks and here in this uh, uh, simple animation as you can see uh, you can see if you look carefully you can see how the whole deal the ele the electrical side how it works and uh, take a look at the yellow side of it so that this is how the buttons uh, how they ground the pins pins number four and five on the Arduino and then pins number um, uh, IO six and seven IO means input and output input or output that's the way they're called uh, and the number six or seven uh, how they uh, both uh, get, uh, get actuated and they actually uh, turn the, uh, the relay card on now very briefly let's uh, take a look at how this whole deal works you know in action and here you can see how we set up the uh, the whole arrangement and uh, pretty much this is this is it this, this you can try on your own, on your own uh, older vehicle or maybe you want to put an alarm on it or what have you who knows so but anyhow this is it it's it's got a dual purpose it shows you how the whole uh, door lock system works and it, it if you w if you want to do it if it you know if it uh, suits your purpose and uh, you need it and then it's here and we want to thank you for being uh, on this channel, tuning on to our videos. Uh, we're always doing videos, automotive uh, technology videos. Uh, we have a very loyal uh, following and uh, we appreciate you being here. And this is a free channel, so uh, we don't really um, charge for anything in the, in, uh, on this YouTube video. ADP Training is our channel. And if you can give us a thumbs up or, or some comments, uh, we appreciate it. So uh, thanks for, be for being here and uh, thank you for watching. This channel is Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, today's video we are going to dis the discuss a project, uh, it's an Arduino power window controller. And um, we're going to show you how it's done and how to connect it together and so on and so forth. This project is for, is for people uh, with older cars or maybe not older cars but they just want to replace the uh, the system that they have. Maybe it doesn't work, maybe your, your body module went bad or what have you so you can actually implement this in 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 your uh, own vehicle a basic power window has a power motor uh, as you can see on screen um, on the project we're also going to employ a uh, an eight relay uh, card and these relay cards are about eight bucks you know they're not expensive uh, and you're also going to need some kind of switch with you uh, which your car already probably has it so you're going to have you're going to need the window switches anyhow so 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna use uh, electronic type window switches here, but it's pretty much uh, the, the the idea is it's pretty much the same. As we've always done in, in this um, um, series, uh, the first we're gonna expose you to the diagram, to the schematic diagram, and then later on we're gonna go into the uh, the, the sketch or the software that runs the unit, the, the Arduino. As you can see on screen, uh, the uh, eight, we're, we're only gonna use two relays uh, from the relay card. Uh, once you learn how to do it with with one um, window, you can pretty much do it with with all of them. And the reason we use two relays, one relay is going to go for the up side of the, of the window controller, and the other relay is going to um, it's going to take care of the downside. So uh, having said that, uh, pay attention to the way uh, the relay uh, it's uh, it's connected to to the motor. If you look at it carefully, the center tap of the um, of the relay, in other in other words, the contact side. It's connected to one side of the motor on one relay, and to the the on the other relay, the the same deal. The contact or, or the wiper, you know, of the relay is connected to the other side of the motor. Okay. Now, one side of the relay is connected to ground. The other side of the relay is connected to power. Okay. So, uh, if you look at it with a normally closed relay, it both sides of the motor is always going to be grounded. Okay, and this this is this is how um, uh, automobile ma makers uh, they this is how pretty much how they control the 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 old old power windows. They basically leave both sides of the motor grounded, and then they energize one side or the other side to reverse polarity. So that's pretty much the the way it's done, and it's the same exactly the same way the way we're going to do it. So again, if you look at the diagram, uh, this is the second diagram. It, the, both sides of the uh, motor are always grounded. Uh, this is the resting uh, position for the relay, which is the normally uh, connected side of the relay, uh, pretty much. And then, uh, as you can see, when we energize one of the relays, um, and we're going to do that through the software, one side of the motor um, is energized with 12 volts, and the other side it's already grounded. So you're going to have rotation in one direction. Um, also pay attention to the left hand side that w only one button is pressed and this is this is the whatever this is the up or the down uh, going uh, uh, mo uh, button so uh, it doesn't really matter it's it's just one is going to do one direction and the other button is going to do the other direction so you all, all you have to do is worry about that one button pressing it or just just like you do on 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 your car now uh, you know and on the next diagram, you're going to see how by pushing the other button, then the other side of the uh, the other relay is energized. The other side of the uh, of the motor is energized, and the rotation is going to reverse. Just keep in mind that anytime these relays are off, uh, the normally connected side would it's going to uh, energize. It's not going to. It's just going to ground both sides of, of the motor. So it's it's a pretty simple idea. It's, this is called resistor. Resistive rest at ground. And this, this is something that Ford did maybe 40 years ago, and that's how they started doing uh, power windows, and everybody else copied it and copied Ford after that. So, again, to recap, uh, both sides, of both relays at rest are grounding both sides of the motor, and as you energize either or relay, uh, then it, it, and even if even if you energize both uh, buttons, even if you push both both buttons at the same time, nothing is going to happen. Because then what would happen is that both sides of the motor would be would be 12 volts, and at that point in time, nothing really happens. There is no short, you know. So again, um, normally rested uh, relays, it's um, uh, the, the bo both sides of the motor are, are grounded. Next, we're going to take a look at how all this is done. Um, with this with by looking at the sketch the first on the Arduino the setup is always the first part of the sketch and as you can see on screen we can do a close-up of the sketch and pretty much what the sketch does it's um, it, it tells the uh, the Arduino which pins are going to be uh, input and which pins are going to be outputs and as you can see pins number six and seven uh, are out outputs and numbers four and five are the um, the, uh, the button inputs, which is, which are the ones that uh, they're going to take in the the um, the reading, the value from from the buttons, and the buttons are pretty much grounded. On the Arduino sketch for this project, which we provide upon request, so if you email me at sales uh, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, go to my website and get it from there. If you email me, I'll provide you with with a sketch. 
Uh, but having said that, we, on this sketch, you, you actually it tells you how to connect the uh, these two 10k resistors that you have to connect on these buttons. They have to be connected to power to to 12. Um, I'm sorry, five volts. Okay, so everything you see, it's there on on the sketch. But it's very simple. It's a very straightforward connection. Next, uh, we're going to go into the loop side of the uh, sketch of the software, and this is this is standard in any uh, Arduino or um, uh, sketch. And as you can see here, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you get you have two variables: buttons uh, stayed up and buttons stayed down. Buttons stayed up is going to is going to do the digital read on pin number five, and buttons stayed down is going to do the digital re read um, on pin number four. And these are the two buttons connected to pin numbers four and five. It's all in the, in the uh, diagram in there. And then. Uh, once you do that, then you're going to go digital right pin number 7 and di digital right pin number 8. And this what, it, what this is going to do, I'm sorry, p p digital right pin 6 and 7. And pretty much what it's going to do, it's uh, whatever the uh, variable, whatever we read from pins number 4 or 5, which is going to be either 0 or 1, 0 grounded or 1, uh, 5 volt. Because you only have two stays on a button, so that that's that's what you're gonna see. And then that digital write um, on the seven and the six and seven pin is either gonna ground uh, pin number seven or ground pin number six, and that in turn is gonna ground the relay through that relay card. And the output of the um, of the Arduino, it's a it's actually a ground. Okay, so it's gonna ground that relay card, which is already set up for for an Arduino. Um, or it's going to give it, uh, if it's not grounded, then, then the output is going to be 5 volts, which is pretty much off. Okay, so th this particular relay card works works on ground. So it's all, if it's grounded, it, the relay is on. If it's 5 volts input, then the relay is, is off. So ground is on, 5 volts is off. Following, we can see how we, are, we connected all these uh, wires together. And uh, it may look like spaghetti wine there, but everything is done, it's not right, it works, so it, it has to be done right. So it's pretty much, I'm going to show you with a little motor, I'm going to try and show you in slow motion the direction of the motor so that you can understand what's going on. And finally, we show you the relay card. Uh, it's got two little LEDs in there so that you can see that only those two relays are turning on and off. Okay, and these are the ones that control the um, the up and down of the window uh, motor. So, um, uh, you know, uh, we th we like to thank you for tuning in to ADP Training, our YouTube channel uh, with everything automotive. And it, uh, our channel goes in depth into a lot of the technical side of automotive technology. Uh, but anyhow, we appreciate you tuning in and watching our videos. Having said that, I appreciate you tuning in and thank you for watching. <laughs> Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another video. This video is more of a second part to the um, Arduino Power Window a video that we did before, but this is going to have an added uh, feature where it, it has automatic on and off. Uh, so it's this is only for the front windows if you have children It's not a good idea to put this feature on a rear window That's why we have the other video that show you how to do without the delay God forbid a child sticks his head or her head out of the window on a rear window and then you have a problem So quickly this is how we set up the whole deal um, We're going to show you uh, in, the, in, the in the other video we show you how to do that even a little bit better that we're just going to browse through this very quick uh, next is the uh, the diagram uh, the schematic for this unit is pretty much the same as the other one. As you can see, we're using an eight relay card with an Arduino. Uh, we're only going to use two relays uh, to activate the, the motor on and off. 
uh, on, on either side because remember there is a reverse polarity for the window with the windows to go up and down so normally the relay it's always um, always off the, the regularly co connected uh, side of the relay uh, applies ground to both sides so the motor is grounded at on both sides pretty much also these relays one relay it's up it's for the windows uh, going up and the other one is for the windows going down if relay one energizes the windows go up if relay two energizes the windows go down and pretty much since both sides are always grounded once one one of the relays energizes it's pretty much it applies power to one side of the motor or the other side as you can see uh, a basic power window uh, system is composed of the uh, the window motor which you you should already have uh, if you're converting it into a, a deal then you would have to install the motors then there is the eight um, relay card. This is about eight dollars, um, even less, uh, depending on where you buy it on the market today. It is meant for for an Arduino board or a a Raspberry Pi or one of those deals. And this is this is an automation a relay card that you use for automation. You can use it for whatever you want. Uh, and there is also always the uh, the switches um, that make the windows go up and down. We're going to use electronic type switches here, but that's uh that's just for for uh, to for, to expose the, the the project to you guys so it doesn't matter which uh, switch you use uh next we we can see uh, in this animation how when you press uh, either or button uh, the relay uh, um, uh, e e one of the relay uh, activates and it applies power on one side or to the other side depending on the button that you press and this is all done in software in the Arduino, which we're going to cover the software later on. In this particular project, we are implementing a delay on and a de delay off so that the windows go up and down automatically. You can change the delay to whatever amount of seconds you want according to your system, to your window. Some windows are take longer to, to roll up or, or down, uh, so it's up to you to do that. Okay, uh, And we're going to show you how to do that by changing the delay. Next, very quickly, we're going to show you um, a small uh, uh, clip, video clip of the um, uh, uh, the same system without automatic shut off. So it's pretty much you press on the button and it turns on, you let go and it turns off. So there is no delay in that, so there, there is no automatic um, up or down. system is a simple system so the system doesn't really know when the window is all the way up so you have to tweak the delay value on the software to to change that now as we always do in this series we're going to show you the um, the sketch uh, pretty much so uh, again you can mail email us for the uh, sketch uh, if you want the sketch we'll email it to you it's up to you you have to request it and ask for it as you can see on the sketch, there's the blue section and the red section. The blue section is a setup, as in always uh, in every Arduino um, sketch or saw or program. Uh, and then the red one is the s the actual loop. Okay, so you have the setup and the loop. In a close up of the setup here, you can see the pin mode, how we set up each each pin to do this or that. In this particular case, either output or input. Pins number six and seven are output pins. Uh, pin number seven is the up relay, uh, and pin number six is the down relay. Uh, even though it says switch on the sketch, it's, it should say it's a relay, really. So, uh, but anyhow, uh, and then you have pin numbers four and five, which is um, what it is. Is the actual buttons, uh, the up and down button. So, these pins can be used as their I/O pins, input and output pins. They can be used as either input or output. In this particular ca case, we're declaring uh, pin number se uh, six or seven as outputs. So these are the ones that are going to trigger the relay card. They're going to output a ground or a five volt. In this particular case, the, uh, the relay card, it's um, ground activated. So it, it's going to output zero, so ground. Okay. Uh, and then, then there's pins four and five, which are inputs. 
and again uh, they're looking for a ground you have to install and we show that we mentioned that on the sketch a 10k resistor between 5 volt reference which is part of the Arduino and the actual pin and then the other side uh, it's uh, that's how you're going to ground it through the f through the relay so if if the button is not pressed you're going to have 5 volts going to pin number 4 and 5 if you push the button is going to ground that that voltage through the uh, um, uh, through through the 10k resistor so that you don't burn anything pretty much okay but you have to you have to connect that uh, that uh, pull up resistor in there uh, in order for this to work okay so to recap it's a, it's a pretty simple switch the outputs output a a ground to um, activate the relay card uh, the inputs need a ground from the switch so every time you press on the button it it's gr the, the the pins number four or five are grounded uh, and then there is uh, the delay then you're gonna see that later on now for the for the good for the good part this is this is where the magic happens in the loop side this this is constantly running inside the Arduino board and uh, uh, the very first thing you see is uh, the there is there are two variables uh, button state up and button state down okay and button state up reads relay number uh, five or, or I'm sorry not relay but uh, uh, button number in pin number five and relay state down um, it reads button uh, uh, on on pin number four then, then further down you have an if um, a statement in there it's, it's, it's a whole routine then this, this is where everything happens and it says if button state up equals zero and then there's two lines in there uh, or that means or or button state down equals zero so if button state up or button state down if either if either of these pins four and five is grounded zero means ground then perform the following and this these are all the digital writes that you see after that and you could you'll see digital write on pins number six and seven uh, and either or so uh, it it would if either button it's pressed is grounded so if either button is pressed then it's going to do whatever it says below uh, in the middle you see a delay 3000 3000 equates to three seconds so these are the milliseconds uh, the delay works on the arduinos uh, by milliseconds um, there is also another microsecond feature that's not you're not we're not going to use that here there's no need for that uh, so you're going to have by tweaking this number so you could raise this number to f say your windows are sluggish and it take a while for, for the for them to go so you don't have to press this the button twice you could change that to 4000 or 5000 so it'll go from three seconds to five seconds or whatever you need maybe you need less maybe you just need two seconds and the whole window you know the entire window goes up and down very quick it depends on your car okay then after the delay you're going to see a digital write six and seven off and it says clearly turn relay off uh, further up in the in this particular sketch we may turn relay off equals zero so again this is the same as digital write pin number seven zero meaning I'll put a ground so that's what it, what happened is after you turn uh, both uh, either or either or either of the relays uh, up and down to, to make the window go up and down it's going to wait three three seconds then it's going to turn everybody off then it's there's another delay of 50 uh, that's just to uh, make sure that that the Arduino has time to process this this uh, the relays switching on and off and all that so and that's uh, pretty much it straightforward and to recap uh, you read the state of the buttons on the top there's an if statement it, it evaluates the state of the buttons to ground and if it is if it is so then it, it executes either or either pin number seven or six um, is activated and so the relay is activated so the windows go up or down there is a delay in seconds 
uh, in uh, times a thousand then everybody's turned off and that's it and by the way this particular um, subroutine you can apply to anything that's time delay that you need some kind of uh, you can apply this to the sunroof window that whatever comes to mind right now is the sunroof anything that takes a couple of seconds to activate and then shut off you can apply this particular uh, a project to while you're here we would like to um, uh, 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 call your attention to the uh, we ha we now have uh, YouTube now has a uh, endorsement so you can actually uh, uh, donate to our channel we do this free we don't charge for anything we get a little bit of money from the from the ads that, uh, that we post on, on YouTube but it's not really a money maker so uh, we appreciate it if you endorse us and uh, uh, sponsor us pretty much and uh, uh, we always uh, thank you for tuning into our channel ADP training so I appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, thank you for watching hello everybody and welcome to another video uh, in this project we are going to uh, discuss uh, doing a uh, windshield wiper conversion uh, using only one motor in many parts of the world uh, there is an issue finding parts um, so at the very least you're gonna need a motor um, I developed the software on the Arduino uh, so that you don't have to use a the linkage which is they might be hard to find uh, believe it or not a motor is a lot easier to find than, than the linkage and you need a motor anyway so the project is done without the need for the for for the linkage for the wipers you're gonna need a momentary positioning switch like you see on on screen right now we're not going to use that in here in this uh, 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 in, in the videos but we're gonna use the, uh, the push button uh, type uh, PC board uh, type buttons but just letting you know that that's a type of uh, switch that you're going to need for for this type of wiper system these small positioning switches are very inexpensive and they're readily available almost everywhere we're also going to need an uh, innate relay it doesn't have to be an a relay you just you're just going to need two relays uh, but we we're going to use an a relay card in this uh, in the videos uh, a two relay card which they're very inexpensive that probably two or three dollars um, you know on the market on the world market uh, a lot of them coming from China these relays are triggered by ground uh, and that's exactly what the Arduino is going to provide uh, the relay board first we're going to discuss the uh, schematic um, electrical diagrams and, and then we're going to go into the uh, Arduino um, the sketch or the software that runs the whole deal as you can see uh, the motor uh, it's um, grounded on both sides by the normally closed uh, relays um, basically they apply a ground when they're normally closed and what the Arduino does is it activates the relay one or the other one does the uh, wiper going up and the other does the wiper blades going down At the top of the Arduino you can see uh, the uh, IO pins 6 and 7 connected to the actual relays uh, the rest of the relays are not going to be used here uh, you also have to connect the 5 volt and the grounds um, and then the other side is the, uh, the IO um, which which are actually inputs remember these IO pins are on the Arduino or they could be either or and we actually decide that on the software and we tell it that uh, pins number uh, si um, uh, 6 and 7 are going to be outputs to the relay board and pins number 2, uh, 4 and 5 are going to be inputs from the switches if you look at it carefully they're from the 5 volt um, you go into the uh, 10k uh, resistors you have to have those in there and those resistors are, are connected to the one side of the switch and at the same time to the pins to each of the pins uh, in this particular case the I2 pin number 2 is the uh, the wiper on that that's that's the switch that turns the uh, the wipers on and then the other the other two um, uh, IO pins uh, which are pins number um, 4 and 5 are the two switches uh, the upper switch and the lower switch as we're going to call it here so basically as the wiper goes um, uh, goes all the way up it, it strikes that little switch and then as soon as it does that it returns and it, it strikes the other switch and as you can see in this brief uh, basic animation here you can actually you can see how as you strike if each of the switches uh, the blade the, the Arduino working as, a, as the brains of the system knows the position of the blades and it reverses the motor by uh, by switching the, the relays 
uh, either or, um, and reversing the um, the position of, of, of the blades. So it, it's pretty much it's straightforward, but you have to. Um, it, it took me a little bit, a little bit of time to uh, uh, develop the, uh, the the software, you know, to run the whole deal. So. Although it's a simple system, uh, the complexity is really in the software, which we're gonna uh, we're gonna see next. As with any Arduino, the first part of the program is uh, the uh, setup, and this is uh, basically uh, what sets up the uh, each of the pins. Uh, so if you look at it carefully, the, the setup side uh, it's uh, it sets up pins number six and seven as outputs, and numbers two, four, and five as inputs, and this this is pretty straightforward. Uh, so once those uh, uh, pins are set, then you're ready to uh, 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 write the, the rest of the code, which is the loop side. Now here's the loop side, and this is where the magic happens, pretty much. Uh, the loop side, uh, it, as you can, if you look at it carefully, uh, it, th that's why it's called a loop. It's a repeating pattern uh, within the software, in, and it keeps on repeating endlessly. And uh, so, uh, the, uh, and this is true of any Arduino software, uh, which is written in C. Uh, the first thing you see, and we're going to go deep into uh, how the, the software works, uh, is the um, the button on. Now, button on is pin number two. Uh, so once we click on the button, press the button, uh, the system turns on and it goes into this uh, if statement that comes further down. And the first thing you see is the four looping there that says uh, 100. It's pretty much, you see, if you s look at that little uh, 100 there, if you change that, it'll change the, the repeating pattern. It'll change whether it's going to repeat 100 times, 200 times, whatever you, whatever you set it to. In this particular case, I just, I opted to, to do 100. You can do whatever you want. So if it rains a lot, wherever you are, and th that means that you, when you when you click on the on the on button, it's going to keep on um, running a uh, hundred times or a thousand times whatever you set it to you, so you have to change this number and this is this is a very basic you have to set it to something if you press the on button and again while it's in the park position the, in the down position then it'll turn off and that's we're gonna see that all the way down it says reset wiper and that's uh, that's why we we coded that particular section little section in there next is a while statement and this is corresponds to wiper op wiper up relay on so this this is the relay turning on and this this is what it does and it says if the wiper up stop switch is off um, when we press the the on button then turn that relay on so that means it's going to turn on um, and it's going to go all the way up to the top it's going to hit the upper switch and this is that's corresponds to number two uh, so on the uh, the while statement for number two, um, uh, all the way to the left, you can see the numbers. Uh, it says, if uh, while the wiper up stop switch is on, then stop. Okay, this that corresponds number two. It pretty much turns that relay off, and it, all it does is it stops in the up in the up position. Okay, from there, then it goes to number three. Uh, there's another while statement that says if the down switch is off and it is off because the wiper blade is all the way on the top okay then turn it on turn the relay on that that uh, that uh, that turns the, the reverses the polarity of the motor and it goes all the way down okay and then you'll go into number four which is another um, uh, while statement that says uh, if the wiper down stop switch is on okay then uh, turn the, that relay, the down relay, off. So it basically, and then all the way down, you see b uh, a reset reset wiper. And this is if we, if we press the uh, the on button again while it's on the down position, and then it's going to reset the wiper. It's going to turn it off, pretty much. Okay. So it, this is going to re repeat a hundred times or or a thousand times, whatever you set it to on the, that number on the top. And so basically, it took me a while to to arrive at this. Uh, at what you see here, so it, it w this w didn't happen right away. Uh, it actually took me like almost three days, um, believe it or not. So it's a simple system, but what this does is it does away with all that that mechanical, um, uh, th all the mechanics that you see inside a wiper. If you've ever taken a wiper motor apart and you, you it has a parking switch, it has everything that you see here is done mechanically. Uh, and so 
we said I said to myself well if this is going to be um, useful for anybody in uh, in most of the world pretty much uh, we would need to uh, create that complexity in, in the in the mechanical side uh, we would need to create it here in software and so this is uh, why this is what you see the this is why it is the way it is so I couldn't think of any other way to to reset the system other than to press the on button again I didn't want to add another button I, c I could but it's just more buttons so you don't want to I, I just want to keep parts of the minimum so uh, it's pretty much it's pretty much the way it works it's just four uh, subroutines small subroutines uh, that test I, the state of the motor, or I'm, I'm sorry, of the switch, of the parking switch, and the up level, uh, and, and the um, the up switch, and so it reverses the polarity, goes all the way down, goes all the way up again, reverses the polarity, goes all the way down. That's and that's what this does, pretty much. Next, we can see how we set the the whole the whole circuitry. It looks like spaghetti, but it's um, it actually works. So we set up the whole circuitry. You can see that if you look at it carefully, the the resistors, the 10k resistors in there, and on the, on the switches. And basically, that's that's just yeah, whatever you see there. That's exactly how it works. If you substitute this motor that I see, the small motor that, that I'm using here for a, for a wiper motor, which by the way is probably a good idea if it's geared. A lot of these motors are geared inside, um, and so basically um, you substitute whatever you see here for the for the switches also, and you get yourself a a, a complete wiper system. And of course, the uh, the an eight dollar Arduino board even cheaper if you buy it in, uh, in some quantities. While you're here, we'd like to uh, mention that uh, we now have a, a, a sponsored, uh, YouTube gave us a sponsored button. So um, if you have, uh, we don't uh, we don't ask for, for anything in, in return. We don't charge for, for these videos that we have. But basically, you know, if you can sponsor us, we really appreciate it. And again, uh, we uh, thank you uh, for tuning in uh, as we you always do. We have a lot of loyal customers and uh, we appreciate it. And again, thank you for watching. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Um, today in this video we are going to um, analyze. Um, this is part four of, of, our, of a series of um, Arduino automotive videos that, that we're doing. And this, this video is going to employ a temperature sensor very similar to the uh, uh, to temperature sensors found on, on in automobiles. Uh, but it th this sensor is going to turn on a radiator fan depending uh, on the temperature, on the engine temperature. Now in this case we are going to use a potentiometer which is a variable resistor to effect the temperature change uh, just for uh, brevity and making the video. In parts 1, 2 and 3 uh, of uh, this series we, uh, we show you the, the difference between module uh, and um, in a computer uh, module is it's a limited computer with uh, uh, it controls very few outputs usually one two or maybe three outputs at most as in previous videos we are going to use an Arduino board uh, which is also a module that can actually control m many more uh, inputs but this is just going to do uh, we're just going to control the uh, the fan motor and uh, we're also going to use the driver 100 board which is our own circuit that we uh, specifically made for um, develop that for the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi units. Uh, having said that, this unit can pretty much drive any load. Um, it has to be controlled uh, by something else. In this case, it's going to be controlled by the Arduino board. Uh, we're also going to um, to use a potentiometer of use, uh, as we've said before, in place of uh, the uh, um, engine uh, temperature sensor. Now let's take a quick glance at the uh, schematic here that we have uh, for, for for our setup here, and uh, it's pretty much the same when it comes to the driver 100. The dri driver 100 is connected uh, pin 13, uh, which is the green uh, lead that you see there. It's uh, the one that controls the uh, so you have ground and and pin 13 connected to the driver 100 that controls the the, the, the fan output. 
uh, and, uh, and the, the box itself is all connected uh, to uh, power and ground on 12 volt. Now, uh, the uh, Arduino board mo uh, module, uh, it's we're actually we're doing something a little bit different now. So we're connecting it to the ground, and this is the potentiometer. Potentiometer is always uh, it could be a two um, a two lead. Uh, 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 sensor but it in this particular case we're using a potentiometer so this is going to be a three lead uh, so one side is going to be co the con connected to ground uh, the other one is going to connect it to a five volt reference which is also supplied by the Arduino and then uh, uh, the green uh, uh, leg here which is this is the temperature signal and this is connected to the analog zero input and we're going to see that in, in code, uh, you know, in software, how, th how we're going to make this unit uh, react to the temperature. As you can see uh, on screen, we have a um, uh, a serial uh, prodder in there. You see the, the little numbers. Uh, so we uh, we are actually uh, uh, flipping the um, turning the, uh, the the potentiometer, and this is the actual uh, software in there that you see. And as you can see, when it reaches, uh, and we're going to explain that a little bit later on, when it, when it reaches 2.75. This corresponds more, more or less in this particular uh, uh, situation. Uh, in automotive um, uh, technology, 2.75 is it's about 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so, in other words, it's is the right temperature for the uh, radiator fan uh, to turn uh, uh, to turn on. So, anything about above 2.75 volts corresponds to uh, a a uh, temperature of over ab about 175, 180 degrees, more or less. You know. And below that, it's uh, it's going to turn off, which uh, at that point in time we don't need. Uh, now we could make this unit PWM controlled, so we can vary the fan as well. And then we're going to do that in another video. But in this in this one video, we're actually looking at the uh, at a sensor um, uh, and a, at an analog r output from the sensor itself. And the the unit is actually uh, the, the software here is actually converting the binary uh, um, a number the output into uh, into a voltage and is actually using that to turn the fan on and off as you can see now this is the uh, the, the software that we are actually loading into the Arduino this is the one that's doing all the work uh, and we're gonna we're gonna go a little deeper as we've done before in, in other videos um, into what this means as in other modules uh, including uh, engine control modules and so on and so forth uh, this uh, the software is divided into two uh, the red one is the setup part, and the uh, blue one uh, in, the, in the box it's the uh, the loop part. The loop is always running. The setup just sets up the uh, basic um, pins, and the loop um, can also set up pins. In this particular case, it sets the temperature sensor, and and uh, further down uh, you can see the the actual little code that that uh, uh, compares the uh, temperature uh, readout. If it's greater than 2.75 volts, which is about 180 80 degrees, as we've said before, uh, it turns the uh, the fan high, which is on or off. Uh, so it, this is very straightforward, uh, so that you can understand it. In the setup part, we are setting the serial um, uh, the, the serial uh, so that it can communicate with the computer at 9600. This is basic. Uh, we're setting pin. Pin mode, uh, that's pin number 13 as an output, and this is the one that's going to turn on the motor. Uh, it's going to turn on the driver 100 transistor, which in turn turns on the motor. Further down, and this is where the magic actually happens, we see, um, we start with a float uh, uh, declaration. This is a variable sensor value, and the float just means that it's a point. It's a, it's a decimal uh, number. It's a... Uh, uh, one point something, you know, two point some, three point something. So we have to declare that properly, like this, because we just we don't want to look at just voltage. We want to look at the uh, remnants. So it's if, if it's two point five or two point four, we want to look at that. And this is uh, going to correspond to analog A zero, which is uh, th this the pin that we are actually connecting uh, the the sensor to. And this further, a little bit further down, the sensor valve 
is the variable that's gonna we're gonna uh, it convert that into a, a voltage uh, by uh, multiplying by this uh, um, uh, fraction that we see there uh, 5.0 divided by 1023.0 this pretty much you know you don't have to understand it it's just this this converts whatever the binary uh, output uh, the digital output uh, it's it's analog but it's changing so that that number output is going to be converted into a, into a uh, uh, into a, an actual voltage into a number that we can actually further down now further down it, there's an if statement that says if sensor value is greater than 2.75 then digital write 13 that's pin 13 high that means turn the fan fan on uh, or else means if it's not greater than 2.75 that's else okay that the, then t turn pin number 13 low that turns the fan off so it, it, it's pretty pretty straightforward as you can see we we can we can make this little module pretty much do anything it'll actually we can actually turn it into a uh, into a co it is a computer really but we're just under using it just for the sake of doing the video and explaining how this whole thing works and this is exactly how um, automotive uh, uh, computers are made whether it's wh whether it controls the power windows or the uh, engine or the transmission you name it it's this or the a ABS the uh, anti-lock brakes it's this is just everything is in code uh, so this is the reason why they've well, cars today you know they have some of them have 16 17 computers every everybody's talking to each other you know and that's because it's very easy to do uh, to add on features in future models uh, just by changing the software as you can see here well this is uh, video number four of, uh, of a series of videos for that deals with uh, automotive um, radiator fan control uh, we're gonna do one more that has to do with the uh, changing the variable speed of the fan similar to this one but it also gonna change the speed uh, lower or higher depending on on the temperature input so again, uh, we appreciate uh, you viewing our videos and um, don't forget to click like, you know, this is what keeps us, keep, keeps us going. So um, again, uh, thank you uh, for watching. This channel is for do-it-yourselfers, as well as professional auto repair technicians. We present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on-hands video, and how-to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. Once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle e-book, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge, learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy!